There we are. Hello, everybody. Hi, it's going well, bud. We How's are. everybody going? Thank you for joining Hello, us. Hello, everybody. For uh, off the cuff random uh, discussion, we just decided to come on for the heck of it. What's going on? Watch, uh, watch lovers. What's up, bud? Not much. What you doing, Rich? Not a lot. Just been a little bit under the weather. So I just yeah. made a cup of coffee and decided let's 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 go ahead and BS about watches a little bit. It's been a little little while. You drink a lot you drink a lot of coffee? I drink a lot of coffee. Do you? Yeah. I drink coffee like a like an alcoholic drinks liquor. Okay. Well that's a lot. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. I would know. So would all the guys in my family. You do? You drink coffee as well? No, I drink alcohol a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. No, but I, I, I actually stopped drinking coffee uh, a while back just because I overdo everything. So I uh, yeah, I was drinking too much coffee and then couldn't sleep at night. So. Gotcha. No avatar today? Uh, I, uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't think I've flipped on the thing here. I, was gonna... right. I think you can always change it if you want to. There's I don't a way think to I, do it. Yeah, I've never, I've never actually had an avatar. Um, so there's the new watch. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, look who's joining us. Hey. What's up? Whoa, is that what the fuck I think it is? <laughs> Hey, Clive, how you doing? Not too bad. Who's that? <laughs> it's Bud. Oh, Bud. Is that actually a, is that a freaking Aquanaut? Yep. No, it's a, yeah, it is an Aquanaut. It's an Aquanaut on the bracelet. He did it. Yep, it's an Aquanaut on it. the bracelet, yep. Congratulations, man. Nice. So the last one was on the strap, and I told Rich that I really wanted the bracelet. And so that's... Is there a way to turn yourself up a little bit, brother, so we can hear you a little more clear? Me? Am I Am I a little bit? Uh, yeah, a little bit. How do you? Yeah. Oh, did you get the picture I sent you? Yeah, if you're, if you're 41 date just, yeah. No, 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 no. 36 date just. Nice. Oh, that's... Oh, really? That's the one you were talking about on the show the other day. Well, yeah. Now, the thing is, I actually it came with a rhodium dial, which I still have. And I i think this is 16030, so it has a whole case, actually. But I think it's in really good shape. But holy crap. Man, when you sent me yeah. that picture today, um, I thought that was your, your 41. <laughs> I like that rhodium dial. No, this is a blue dial. Oh, blue that's one. a blue dial. Okay. Yeah, now the one I still have the rhodium dial. So you switched it out? I switched it out. Nice. It looks really good in the wrist yeah. shot that you sent to me. Oh yeah. Blue Romans, fuckers. Blue Romans. <laughs> so this is the little brother to the date just forty one. Yeah, that's a good one. That looks good. This is the one that you just got back, Clive? Yep. You were talking about earlier? Very yeah. Nice. Yes, because, and uh, Glenn's, Glenn's about, he's still working on my launching dead crap watch, but, well, let's be honest, it's a dead Nazi watch. But, still. I, I tell you what, though, um, you may not like a date just, and that's fine. No one's, no one's forcing you, but holy crap. You may not like a date just. Sorry, my bad. I like those ones. They're, they're, they seem extra, they're very masculine, those date chests. Well, yeah, and, you, and the secret is it's steel. Even, even a date chest Rolex steel is becoming unobtainium. 
Yes, they're very hard to get. Uh, Especially those models that we tend to gravitate to, like the Romans. And also, I kind of like... Niles. And not to mention the engine turned bezels. Even the bezel is steel. The bezel is steel. Robot. What's up, Boozer? How you doing? We don't have that many people watching with us today, but that's okay. Well, you know, I, I literally just got back from a meeting, so. How was you I guys can't see the chat again. I'm not sure what that was, but I can't see the chat. So I think it's just what I'm using. Like you said, I'm supposed to use the Google Chrome. I think that's why I can't see the chat, but it's so, okay. So what are you thinking about that Aquanaut? You, you made the right decision <laughs> picking it up again? Yeah, I think, yeah, I th I was disappointed he sold it in the first place, but then to pick it up on a bracelet? Yep, yeah. I'm going to back for a little bit less with the bracelet. It's a year newer, and, uh, yeah, it's got the bracelet and the, and the straps, and, of course, I've got them them straps that I had on the last one coming. You can go on, uh, you can go online and you can buy Aquanaut uh, uh, straps, you know, ones that you don't have to cut. I mean... You know, I don't have to cut the original one. I can I can cut these ones that I've ordered. So I've got green and I've got blue and I've got black straps coming. Okay, Booster, are there any undervalued Rolex models left? You know what I'm going to say, right? The day just. Well, okay. Yeah, but oh, yeah, I would say, yeah. And... Um, you know, a little bit of a stretchy, jingly, jingly bracelet, but yeah, comfortable. Also, pre ceramic, pre ceramic, so it doesn't have the super case. I mean, you remember, Bud, um, when we were talking a few months ago, the right. uh, I I figured one of the last one of the last undervalued models out there for Rolex was the two tone Zenith Daytonas. Yes. Um, and remember when we were looking at those and we were pricing those at about twelve and a half thousand? Remember, bud? Yep. Okay. I would say you can still find some decent deals out there if you look and if you're lucky. I'd say bluesy sub. I'd say actually the explorer. I'd say actually the explorer in 39. If you're willing to take a chance on the big flea. You know, those are still going because keep in mind they've been cranking those things up for a while. Um, I think if you look around, if you find a date just for a good price that you're in love with, then I'll steal. But um, I'd say the Outmaster, yeah, I agree. The Outmaster is very undervalued. You can uh, pick that. I, 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 however, I still think the 1530 and the 1630 Boozer are saying. Two-tone pre-ceramic GMTs are soft. Yep. And when you said bluesy, Clive, did you mean the pre-ceramic or the ceramic? Uh, I meant the pre-ceramic. Yeah. Subs. Uh, rel and relatively soft. Yeah. And good point, Booster. Um, now, the, I think there's a couple of auctions that are coming up that are uh, that might even that might even drive up the price of the pre-ceramic GMT, of the two-tone uh, pre-ceramic GMTs. How's that? Literally, um, I can't remember, uh, Scott, Chris was telling me about them, and the provenance, I can't I can't remember if they're like extra special, super duper special, limited, whatever, or if they're owned by somebody famous, but once, once a reference like a 1675 or 16, Seven five zero and two tone starts going up once once it sells for a high price at auction, the rest of them starts falling falling as well. But I still say, I still say the fifteen thirty and the sixteen thirty are probably some of the best bargains out there. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm I'm still beside myself on on. I mean, you know, I can't buy everything. I can't buy freaking everything, and you know how badly. Uh, you know, bud, how badly I wanted a two-tone Zenith Daytona, right? Oh, I could have picked one of those up, box and papers, like two or three years ago, like Christmas time for like, God, like 85. 
I'm kind of regretting picking up my vintage Speedmaster, my Omega, in, in lieu of getting the Daytona, that Zenith Daytona. I should have picked up a third Daytona, and it should have been that Zenith, and I should have passed on the on on something else. Don't you think, Bud? You think, Clyde? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I mean, you got you got two Daytonas, though. I mean, how many of one watch do you really want? Um, I'm okay with having nothing but a I Daytona guess, collection if I got rid of everything. I, Shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. But, yeah, that's true. But if, if you really love the Daytona, if you appreciate the nuances between the different Daytonas, now that would be an amazing collection to have, been, you know, half a dozen or eight Daytonas with historical time. I, I can't. Okay. I will tell you something about Daytona, but I can't do it on air. Okay. So, um, so what do you, I also, Is it something I want to know or something I don't want to know? Probably something you don't want to know. <laughs> It'll turn me so, off. The okay. sixteen thirty—that's the rare bird, ain't it? Yep. You still have two. You still have two of them, Clive. No, I've got the sixteen thirty, which is the rare bird, the two tone. Then I've got the fifteen thirty, which is the, the, the rarer, rarer bird. The one, the fifteen thirty, is all steel. Right. And it's a, it's called a Rolex date, even though it's thirty six millimeters, just like the sixteen thirty. But they only made fifteen hundred of the of the fifteen thirty. And the 1530 is the mechanical version versus the quartz, right? They're both mechanical versions. Oh, oh, oh they both. One, one that's is, right, that's you know, right. The other one is two-toned. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm sorry. I was a little lost. That's all right. Yeah. yeah the, the, uh, and so the, uh, the quartz version, just for the sake of it, what's the reference number? Just so I know. Do you know? Uh, there's a few. Keep in mind, they've been pumping up the quartz. What's 7016, I think, is like the okay. quartz version. People probably and, refer to it as the quartz version rather than the reference number. Yeah, the oyster quartz. But I would, um, I'd get the fuck out of, I mean, I, uh, they had like a baby watchman literally at uh, my AD that just come back from his extensive Rolex training. And more or less what he was telling me was, Get the fuck out. Out of what? Oyster quartz. Oh. Basically, Rolex probably going to be handling it much longer. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? You know how I see it. I I would love to have one of those in my collection. Why not? It's a it's a novelty. Because it might turn out to be a three or four thousand dollar paperweight if something goes hits up. I gotcha. But it, it's certainly a novelty. You know, kind of like. Uh, Kind of like the Hewer stopwatch I picked up for a couple hundred bucks. For me, it's a it's a novelty piece. Mm. Um, here, I'll pull it out. This Miami. came from this came from an East Block Russian country. I ordered it on eBay. Oh. I took the chance of buying it, and you know, and it was a couple hundred bucks. To, to, it probably paid their rent for half a year in in whatever East Bloc Russian country they were in. But for 200 bucks, this is a 1950s decimal timer. So I specifically got it because we were during the Olympic time. And, and you can time Olympic events with the decimal timer. Hmm. Right? Yeah. You yeah. see how that, and it's a, and it's a hewer. And uh, I mean, I love this thing. It's, it's, it, it's so, so the back, here. Well, and again, you know, the watches TV, what, whatever the guy's name is. I can't think of his name offhand. Look at the hand, uh, Gillichet on the back case. Is that what they call that? Yes. And then and then it opens up here. If I try to get a decent shot of it. There we go. You know. But if you want to like change the light bulb in the ceiling of your garage, we can we can hang out and wait a couple minutes. I mean, just get the ladder out. What are you talking hey, about me? Uh... Yes. Yeah. Oh. Darkness.
Now he's got the Porsche. There you go. I like that better. Okay, okay, okay. Let's hope I didn't screw this watch up while I was doing that. Um. You know, so th so this is my case back open watch. All of my watches are closed back, Rolexes, Patek, whatever. And so when I want to look at an open back watch and see it running and ticking, I can do that on large scale with this one. Well, actually, I've got a trench watch with a hunter case back where I could open it up like that as well. And, and I mean, it's beautiful. This is beautiful inside. Yes. And, and it's signatured, you know, with, with the Hewer signature. I mean, I thought this was the coolest thing ever. I was just super excited when I picked this up. I think it's fun. However, you know, and people people ask what's undervalued. I'd say quit I mean how how's the Q okay. Oh the Timex Q? Oh shit, yeah. Max wants to buy my Timex Q, so I'm gonna sell it to him for what I bought it for. Hey, what's up, Max? I seen Max joined the chat. I love this thing. Yeah, well, it's so no, much fun. It's just no, fun. No, no. Max Levinson. That's the young kid, right? Yep. That's cool. There's some young kids out there into watches. What do you think? Sixteen K for a one one six five two zero stainless steel. Ah, that's about on the money, I think. Now, is Max the guy that bought the Blanc Pain or the uh, Breguet? Ah, I can't remember which one. This, he, he was on the Archer stream a couple of times. He also has, uh, he's also, uh, he's been adopted by like half the gang, by Kara and Ben and the half the gang of Odinke. Miami James. That's a new guy. I've never seen him before. He says, I just picked up a two-tone Zenith Daytona. Old stock, no paper. Beautiful. I mean, you know, well, yeah. what, I wonder what he got. I wonder if he got a, uh, well, there's a few variations of the Zenith, right? Inverted six. I mean, uh, yeah. I wouldn't care. Just a two-tone Zenith. Uh, but having the extra little variations would just be cherries on on top right yeah if if that's what you like that's what you're into that's what you're into i mean actually you know what i wish I'd, i just want to pull my hair out right here on air because you know kenny knew in oh i had it in my hand i had a white dial all steel white dial zenith inverted six in my hand at his shop oh you for, saw for 17 8 17 8 that's a twenty five thousand dollar watch now Miami james it is really minty i felt bad wearing it black dial no variation a series 1999 nice well wow. i'm okay miami james ah. so it's just like the one i bought Oh no, he's got a Zenith. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he, that's tough to wear. Yeah, that's tough to wear. Well, that's tough to wear. It's still bezel. I mean, you know, Miami James. You know, if you're a stockbroker, I think you're fine. If you're a construction worker, probably not. You know, yeah. stockbrokers can be hard on our watches too. If, Man, I gotta if, tell you, you walk in, you walk in to get a copy from the copy machine. And next thing you know, smack! You just smack the goddamn door frame. I mean, it's it's a at least on a construction site, you're, there's nothing to hit. You're you're standing in open air. Um, no, because the, it killed me to remove the bracelet stickers. Okay, Miami, now you're fucking with me. You're so fucking with me now, aren't you? I only just took off the bracelet stickers from my. Uh, Oh man, he had bracelet stickers on his '99 Daytona. You, yeah, you you deflowered it. You Miami, you just probably he deflowered didn't. it by about ten thousand dollars. 
I mean, hey, he bought yeah, it to wear yeah, it. But I don't know. I don't know because <sighs> when I when I see European watch company throw up a Daytona with stickers, <sighs> those sons of bitches ask an extra ten grand for that watch. Is it realistic or not? I don't know, but ask it another ten grand. Get it? Maybe I'm not sure. But on the other hand, what you see and that ah. Uh, and that and that's a question I face all the time. I, I because it's just like there's a couple that are so nice. I just I just almost don't want to wear them because they're that nice. Okay, now he's yeah, I'm I'm not wearing mine. Mine is a safe queen, and you know why, because I bought the um the the ceramic. So my steel is a safe queen and it never it doesn't get worn. It's okay. I bought it to wear it. Nice, respect us. Mike. Yeah, James. yeah, and, and I and I would say the same thing. I bought my one one six five two zero to wear it, and then when the AD oh. called me for a ceramic to pick up a ceramic, I said, "Oh shit, I'm glad I didn't wear it yet. I'm gonna wear the ceramic instead." I and actually that. still have stickers on a couple of watches that I wear every day. So my uh, my Sky Dweller, the clasp has the stickers on it still. I just wear them until it falls off. I just, you know, when they fall off, then I take them off. It takes about um, seven months for them to fall off in a, in, a, in a 12 watch rotation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Miami's asking, what do you think of a 116520 stainless steel for 6,000? I think that's fair considering the prices have come down a little bit but not on daytona's they haven't come down no what do you think, no i I'd say, I'd say it's about on the money right and keep, and keep in mind that's a local sell so you put miami james you're probably more up with i presume you're from miami just and probably not miami which is in oklahoma but miami which is in florida and um you know, well, actually, one of the things I've heard is that Miami is actually a well. Max is telling me Miami is actually a great place to buy watches because they're just lousy and thick with them over there. Now, Max Dubois, Clyde, I'm considering a one nine zero one eight quartz gold for nine k. I will not get it repaired. I will I not get it repaired in the future? Then can only Rolex service it. Uh, now keep in mind, Max Dubois, and keep uh, an oyster quartz is both mechanical and electronic. If you've got like an old school Wattsmith, they can repair the mechanical parts of it, but the electrical parts of it, unless it's just cleaning the diode or whatever, unless it's just cleaning it off, no, only only Rolex can do that. Why are you assuming Rolex won't service a quartz watch any longer? I, I would guess, in my opinion, if I was just to say, I, I would say they take care of it for the rest of their life. Because the kid who just came from Rolex, being trained by Rolex as a watchsmith, is saying, no. I got you. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just like, why, you know, why, why are you saying change the IMR in my Porsche? Because the guy that just, you know, the new Porsche mechanic who just came, yeah. Boozer so, says about Max bringing a minor into the Archie stream is worse than bringing him to a whorehouse. Yeah. yeah I've seen that. Well, it's more like a horn house. I know. I have to keep my uh, finger next to the mute button when the kids are around. Oh, yeah. Well, and the thing is, Archie, Archie was actually really cool about it. He was, he was actually trying to go G-rated. He was trying to go G-rated anyway. It's just that the, it's just that the nasty vinyl punchers, the trolls were having a field day. Okay. So Miami's, uh, Miami's Daytona is a two-tone black dial, A series, nineteen ninety-nine, and 1999. as as we all know, A series means that's the last year they made that watch's variation because they start with Z in year one, and they end. At least I think they start with Z, and then they end in A. Right. Um, and and that's exactly the same. Uh. Your watch is the same year in series as my 36 millimeter day date. It's an A series 1999. And that's why I don't want to ever 
part myself with that one either. I yeah. mean, you're not going to find another good quality mint version of that watch that's 20 years old. You know, <sighs> I mean, you will, but he came across it. So the buses where, come less often to wear or to hoard. See, to me, that's almost like uh, that's and it's a, it's a philosophical question. There, I don't think there's a right answer. Pet Shop Boy. I agree with you, Pet Shop Boy. After looking at a Day Date 36, he says that Day Date 40 looks bloated. Yeah, I, I do think it's an over an oversized watch. In my opinion, that Day Date 40. Uh, look, you know what? Well, actually, one of the one of the guys here here at the Red Dirt Diocese, we'll just call him uh, Lyler T. Lyler was basically saying, you know, he actually is like, your date just 41 is gorgeous, but it's just too big. It's too chunky. He's like, he likes the date just in a 36. Yeah. You know where, where, where I'm coming at it from is that I have a box full of watches and most of my Rolex sports, they're all 40s. I need a 36 watch. And so which watch could be the 36 you're not going to pick a 36 in a sports model or in a lot of other variations of watches but you're going to you can do it in the day date just fine you know? what about the explorer uh i've never personally tried one 36 well I'm, yeah i may i might have some experience with the 36 millimeter explorer yeah, I thought you had one. <laughs> Those are watches known for that size, I think, right? right? So, yep. yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, though, you know, of course, we all know, as we all know, the Explorer 14270 is the surprise fuck off watch of 2018. But, uh, hey, blue shirt. Hey, What's blue, up, shirt, blue shirt, Buddha. Buddha? What's up, Clint? How you doing? Welcome. Welcome, well, Blended and, Whiskey. And one of the ones I also just picked up is the OP39 with the blue Explorer dial. Really? Yeah. There's an OP on uh, Craigslist here that I was looking at that's a uh, white dial. And I've got two date just that are 36, and I really like them. So I was looking at the at the OP. Do you like it? I really do. I mean, it's, um, I, it, of course it has baton hands. It doesn't have Mercedes hands, but, um, yeah, I like it in blue. I, I think, I think with white, the contrast might, the lack the relative lack of, uh, contrast might, uh, might, you might find difficult depending on how good your eyes are. The, the white gold with the blue on the other hand highlights it. Right. It's a nice little solid watch, and uh, I don't know. Everyone talks about, well, you know, it's a beater watch. Beater. One of the things I've always heard is, you uh, if, if a watch collector has a watch that they love, and but they're kind of embarrassed about it, they'll call it the beater watch. But you know, actually, I think a modern OP, a six digit, even a thirty six, is a great beater watch or a great everyday watch. Absolutely. Well, there's actually, speaking of both of them watches, here close to me, there's a the OP39 white dial, and there's a Rolex Explorer 1, uh, the 36. Is it, five or six, is it five or six digit? Hi, crappy. It is the 14270, so it's the, uh, it's five, the digit. five digit. Yep. Okay. Um, two, well, um, pros and cons. Pros, it's probably, does it have a tritium dial or Swiss or Swiss only? Let's see. The tritium dial, T-Swiss, and let's see, yeah, the tritium, tritium okay. Swiss. So it has the possibility if you, you know, it might have the possibility to darken up, especially one of the things I've always heard is if the, if it, spends an exposed amount of time not being exposed to sunlight. It was one of the things that can cause the patina. 
it um, of course we're talking hollow everything, hollow end links, hollow bracelet, and yep. we're talking we're talking about the older we're talking about the older movement. Yep, two thousand eight. So yeah, it's a little bit older. It's got papers. Got it's got everything. Looks like it's got service papers here. So one four two seven zero or one one four two seven zero. It says one four two seven zero. So it says. Well, if it's got service papers, I'm sorry. No, actually, I'm sorry. I read it wrong. I bought this in the early 1990s. So, yeah, it went back in for service in 2008. Okay. And it, they, they at least they had the sense to say, don't fuck with the dial, which is cool. Um, right. It'd be a nice watch. Um, you know, it's everything's hollow on it. It's got the older movement on it, but you know they'll support that for a while. Um, you know, I think for like an everyday wear, I think the one one four two seven zero would be a lot better choice. How much? How much are we wanting for it? Now the Explorer is forty seven fifty, and the OP is forty seven hundred. So they're literally about the same price. Mm -hmm. And that's a white dial OP. It's a white dial OP, and the and the pictures of it are nice. I've seen them. Is it a thirty nine or a thirty six? Thirty nine. Ooh, ooh, damn. Two thousand eighteen. Mm. Well, and of course, the Explorer is the class is the classic sports watch, and right. the OP is more of a is more of a casual. My with the white dial, I'd probably even say dressier, casual. With the one with half a foot and dressy, man, that's yes. that's apples and oranges. I'd be tempted to probably go. I'd probably be tempted to go for the OP thirty nine. Yeah, I would too, just because. Um, well, and the other one's got the service papers, but I think it'd be probably be due to be put in for service to see to see what kind of shape it's in, you know. So this is yeah. Craigslist. God knows. Aunt G is saying, I got the OP39 black, and I love it. It's so classic. Yes, exactly. And I think the white is just as good. Um, yeah, I, I I do not like – I don't like the other versions. I don't like the – blue and rhodium maybe, but the trouble is I don't like the how it's got baton indices with loomed indices interspersed. And the, and the little color – the little dashes of color behind the – it, or They're, I don't like that as much. Either. It's almost distracting the little colors. I don't exactly. Really like them. Now the white, white or the black though. If Rolex had any goddamn sense, they would be changing it to either all. To me, it should be either all gold indices, solid indices, or all loomed. Quit the interspersing bullshit. Right. Blue shirt Buddha says he's still loving his T Rex hands, thirty nine millimeter. Explorer two one four two seven zero Mark One dial. He says it's almost the perfect watch. Oh yeah. Well, actually, the person I bought the LP thirty six. The reason why he was selling is that he got a two one four two seven zero Mark Two. What are the T Rex hands? That's the Mark One. That what they're saying is they're they're kind of on the short side. So uh, I see. And they're, what they're saying is that Rolex, they're, th they're thinking Rolex cheaped out and just put the 36 hands on the 39 till they ran. <laughs> no, I, I shit you not. I shit you not. That would, to me, that would make it a collectible piece. Uh, possibly. But keep in mind, they did that for a couple of years. Gotcha. But you know what I mean? It's like finding a... And the yeah, thing is, just... and also with the Explorer, if you look at the Explorer, even with the Mark II... The uh, Mercedes hour hand, it doesn't go all the way. I mean, it doesn't go all the way. It's still too short, even on the Mark II. Now, if you look at the batons, though, on the OP36 with the Explorer dial, it the, the hands are perfectly sized. The hour hand goes to the inside of the indice or the, um, or the number, and the minute hand goes to the outside. It's a lot easier to tell the time, a lot clearer. I see. And Blue Shirt Buddha says, I love it even more since Archie sold his. I would agree. Y yeah. So every every man needs a Rolex. Every watch guru needs a Rolex. Archie has no Rolex. 
What's, What's up, Rooted Rotor? Yeah, he's going to get rid of that Explorer, his last Rolex, because that 5196 is on the way. Yep. That makes me want Rolex all the more. Look, he made the right moves exactly, picking yeah. the 5196. The, the 5196 is my avatar, so he's buying the watch that you see in my avatar there, which is absolutely stunning. And and in my opinion, it's more stunning than his date Calatravas. So I hope he gets rid of one of the date Calatravas and does something else with that. And a crappy likes to Oh, hey. Hey, crappy, what's going on? What happened to every man needs a Rolex? Well, you know, and what and every watch guru needs a Rolex. So, crappy, your guess is as good as ours. Now, it could be, maybe, and when he was saying that, I said, oh, so, in other words, uh, Brisbane Luxury Watches finally sold their last Explorer too, then, huh? Implying that it wasn't his all along. He was just, you know. Oh, oh, oh I get you now. I'm a, sorry, I'm a little slow today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Um, There's that Aquanaut, baby. Oh, I can't wait to get it. That's that's what I'm getting. You're getting the yeah, bracelet. Yeah, yeah. You're getting the bracelet. Yeah. I have to admit, the bracelet is badass. Nice. Honestly, I'm much more excited. To me, the bracelet makes it look more like the cost that it is. I mean, with just the strap, it doesn't. To me, it just seems like it's too much money with just a strap. So, I think the, the, bracelet, the reason I, you know, I so I initially ordered ordered it without the bracelet and then about one week later i called them back and i said you know what i want to change my order let's make it a bracelet watch and then order me to strap secondary and that was because uh upon doing another week's worth of research i realized the hand finishing involved on the bracelet and Look, I'm not going to have a steel Patek bracelet ever again in my life. I might as well get it on this son of a bitch, right? Right. All in, motherfucker. All yes, in. all in. I got the bracelet. I got the chocolate brown strap and the black strap. You know, should I have gotten the chocolate brown strap? I don't know. Fuck me. I just decided if they discontinue the ugly chocolate brown strap one day, it'll probably go for a thousand dollars regardless of what it looks like. If I understand that you want to be cognizant. You want to be aware of, of value retention. On the other hand, which strap do you like? I think I'm going to put the chocolate brown strap on it when I get it. So that, um, answer the question, what strap do you like? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have it. Oh, you're asking Bud. You're asking Bud. No, I'm asking Me? you. Well, no, you, you, yeah. you, so with the way you're talking, you only ordered the chocolate strap because you because potential collectability. Which one do you effing like more? No, no, I got them all coming. The chocolate and the black and the bracelet. So I got okay. three, three things coming with the watch. But I'm going to put the chocolate strap on it so that I can be different. It's like the beginning of Star Trek Four, where Spock was had his uh, copter restored to him and was playing Super Jeopardy with three computers. And the last, the last question was, "How do you feel?" Excuse me. How do you feel? I do not under understand the nature of the question. I have a green strap coming, and I'm going to put that on right away because I just want to see if the loom. You know, I think I think it's. I'll be right back. Now, Miami J. Oh God, he's going. We talked about Archie. Now he's going to Archie us. What size is that? My no, but that's a Aquanet thirty nine, right? Uh, it's a forty, is what I thought it was, but it's the fifty one sixty seven A. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Now, crappy luxury says I collect straps but have no watches. No, crappy, we're talking about watch straps, not strap ons. Has has Crappy collected his watch yet? No. Nope. There are you getting close, Crappy. No, nowhere near close. He's got like, yeah. Hey, Crappy, go ahead and uh, <laughs> looks right on the rubber. Crappy, what's your what's your PayPal address? It's crappyluxurypdx at gmail.com, right? 
rubber. <coughs> All right. This watch is awesome on the rubber strap. I really like it on the strap. No, it's just no, uh, no. I got my camera on. Hold on. Bracelet I think is more dressy. And then Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what are you guys what are you guys uh talking about now? Uh strap ons. I got you. <laughs> oh, with, oh thank you. Fortunately, I think the child's probably too young to understand. Oh, yeah. And I got my headphones on anyway, so you can. Oh, that's good because otherwise, you're going to be Hey, hey uh, uh, David. Hey, what's up, Dave? WV David. Yeah, pet techs go well with sandals, shorts. I, I really think the 5196 that, that I have in my avatar, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't isolate itself as a dress watch. Honestly, it looks great in a pair of jeans with an Iron Maiden shirt. So Rota Rota. Is anyone selling a bluesy? Ever since AC got rid of his, I want one. You see, now AC, I mean, rooted rotor, that is the right philosophy to have. And okay, Pet Shop Boy is, is saying, mm -hmm. besides the day date, which is the best gold Rolex to have? A gold sub? Ah, uh, Sky Dweller, yellow like gold. Sky Dweller, or I'd say the GMT. I kind of like it. I love the yellow gold GMT with the green dial. Yeah, that's why I was about to say. Gold Daytona green dial. Yeah, and because it's such a contrast between the two. Yeah, I like the black, you know, the black and the green. I really like that version. And Rose Gold that. Yacht Master on the rubber strap. Well, as, and Blizzard Boat says, I'm dying for a bluesy. Actually, guys, if you if you look around, keep in mind the 16613, they've been making those for like 25 years. Uh, I still think you could find those relatively, rel I mean, for Rolex, for contemporary Rolex, relatively inexpensively. I mean, hell, I've seen them. I've seen them uh, here in the flyover states, like 8,000 or less. It's, I think one person was selling like a black and uh, not a bluesy, but a uh, gold two tone uh, gold and black for like sixty nine or something. I have a friend selling a bluesy pre ceramic one six six one three, and that's what I asked you earlier if that was the one that's that's a little bit more uh, if people want that. And actually, what's weird is the serial number originally was a longer digit. It was the R16613, and then it had the other five or six digits behind it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, but I do believe that's just the 16613. But a rooted rotor was eight ish Clyde for Minty with uh, box and papers. And that's, yeah, that's not bad. I mean, I, I, I actually picked up a bluesy pre ceramic for eight orphaned, but the thing was exceptional shape. Literally, right. yeah, still had the. I think they sent it in, I think someone sent it in up to the Rolex Service Center, got it back, and then just never put it on after that. Still had the Service Center stickers on it and so forth and so on. And the lug ends were so sharp you could use it to pop balloon. I could shave with those lugs. I'm in love with my bluesy right there, especially after I found out you can't get diamonds on your bluesies anymore. And this is a ceramic. So imagine how few diamond bluesy ceramics Smurf. Smurf, how many few of these were made. All of the rarities, diamond, ceramic, Smurf. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with this watch. Uh, so, okay, so what do you guys think about the dirty dial? <laughs> the dirty dial? Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that watch. Blasphemy. Anathema. What? Blasphemy. Anathema. Oh. You know where I saw a picture of a dirty watch and I fell in love with it? Um, one of Bob's watches YouTube videos, he was going over the diamond watches and he's the one that, that brought up the fact that 
the Rolexes are discontinued in the diamonds on the sports yeah. edition. Uh -huh. The pills can't hear it, right? Huh? I thought you're on headphones. You can't hear it, right? You can. You no, he can't hear anything. You can okay. hear him though. You're probably, you're probably walking up to him and said, "Who's a sturdy little watch? You look. <laughs> you look like you're such a sturdy little watch. You'd probably love it if I shoved my fist in you, wouldn't you?" Hey, Hoser, I do believe Tudor is run by the same. It, it isn't it Clive? Isn't Tudor run by the same as is Rolex? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's the charity too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I love that sturdy dial watch. It looks so amazing with the diamonds on it. I thought Clive had one of them. Didn't you have one of them? No, no I've had. Um, I've had a one six eight zero three and then one six six one three. And not to mention, then I also had. A, Way back, a couple of years back, I had a two-tone uh, bluesy uh, yacht master. I love the yacht master. I just hate that. I hate that big old soft gold bezel on it. Yeah, a Tudor is Rolex, uh, Boozer. The crap so. because I'm a charity too, and much and much like and much like Rolex, he's fairly anonymous. Completely anonymous. Oh wait, hold on. Let me let me take this call real quick. Hold on. Yeah. Sorry. So guys, I can't. I've been uh, playing phone tag with Victor all damn day. So what's that, bud? You've been what? I was just telling the guys in the chat that I can't. I keep for some reason I can't reply to them in there, but I was just telling them all hi and Roto Rooter. I do have a friend that is selling that uh, 16613. If you are serious, let me know. Actually, I was thinking about buying it off of myself, so, but he does have a nice one pre ceramic. My, my email is in my YouTube uh, description or whatever under email contact or what have you if you want to send me. Your email to contact yeah. booze to contact Bud or whatever I can forward you the information. Yep. Yeah. 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 Blue shirt Buddha says, Rich, I'm glad you didn't sell yeah. the gold yeah. day date. That is the ultimate F off watch. As I slowly approach 60 years of age, the more I want to add one to my collect yeah. collection. Yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah. I, agree, I agree with Blue shirt Buddha. I think that's, you know. I think the day is yeah, that is I'm looking down and reading the question. Mm. Okay. By the way, uh Rich, would you mind if Victor joined us? No, not at all. Send uh, I will send him the link. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you can do that. Cool. Do it. <laughs> hey baby. All right. So what I will do is I will go into yep. And then I will click on it, right click on it and say, copy link. Mm -hmm. And then I will open messenger, iMessage. See how that works? Maybe I should have lives, maybe I should have screen shared it to show you how you how to freaking do it. Yeah. But here's it. Rooted rotors asking you, bud. Do you have box and papers? He keeps box and papers on everything, Rooted Rotor. Yeah, he has box and papers. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not, your friend. It's your friend. It's, it's my friend, but he does. He's very much like me. He has everything. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be on in about five minutes. So, so yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah, I, I had recently connected with Victor on uh, on Instagram. And just a hell of a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy. And I told him I sold the the Aquanaut and I rebought it. And he was like, Oh my god, you're so lucky. So I know he's well, happy. Booster is uh, quoting police there from the police. Yeah. What's that? Uh, 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 quoting police lyrics from the police. <laughs> And if you got that joke, you're definitely over 40. Yeah, I got it, but I'm there, yep. The Rolex has taken the studio back from Clive. Yep. 
You guys ever seen that movie, two thousand one, A Space Odyssey? Now, oh, are you selling? Are you selling rooted? Are you talking about your rooted rotor with uh, your Bluesy yeah. rooted rotor? Yes, I have a friend that's selling his Bluesy and uh, a rooted rotor. I was seeing if he was serious, he can touch base with Rich to get in touch with me. Yeah. And I've, I've, I actually tried to talk my friend out of it. So, because I think that that's going to be pretty big collector's watch. So, I but yeah, he's selling it. So, he's well, interested. Now, here's something that's interesting. One of the things I've noticed is, of course, everyone, the, I don't know if this is still, but when I was first going in, the 16803 purple sub, purple sub, two tone. Yeah, I actually think the early one six six one three blues are starting to darken up as well. Also starting to go purple. You know, I I could have swore I seen that on somebody's hand, and I thought I was seeing something. I thought it was just a reflection of the light, but I think there is. I think that is starting to happen. Yep. Max Dubois, I'm still having. I think it's pronounced Dubois. I'm still having nightmares after Rich described the board used to strap down patients. Yeah, that was brutal. We did that last Thursday. And, um, you know, we gave him half of a normal, a larger size dose of Benadryl, according to the doctor. Yep. And it really put him out. He was drooling when we took him in. And he didn't wake up until the shot, uh, until they started putting the needle in his cheek. And so, um, you know, he was already strapped down at that point and everything. And uh, he was, you know, screaming while he was still drowsy. So it got over a couple of minutes. Yeah, it got over in a couple of minutes and, and he went back out, you know. And so it, it was uh, a lot better than we hoped, but it was still a little rough. Good, good. That was good. Glad to hear that. But yeah, thanks. Well, I'm glad to hear it went well. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. What a nightmare, kids. Speaking of Benadryl, I had an allergic reaction to some kind of nut last week, and I had to take three Benadryl. Oh, Jesus. And them things are a lot stronger. Oh, yeah. Well, some people are working good. I always have allergies, but I'll sometimes I'll just. If you're gonna, if you had congestion anyway, a lot of times I have to use the CPAP. So congestion, you know, I can't really have a bunch of crapped up stuff. Uh, like, my nose. Yeah. So in a lot hey, of ways, hey, hey. dual purpose. You might as well use it. Oh, well, my wife wanted to hit me with an EpiPen, and I never seen her so happy to do that swing and stab in motion in her life. <laughs> uh, she, I wouldn't do that. I took the Benadryl instead. So an EpiPen. For what? Um, we have it, all my kids have my kids have uh, uh, allergies and stuff. So oh, allergies! Got, mm, nom, nom, for nom, everything, oh, in case of an emergency, nom, in case it gets that bad. Nom, yeah, that's oh, wow. That's why you would use an epipen for an emergency nom, for amusement. Is that the same thing for nom, epileptic person? I don't think so. No, this is for like. Uh, this is to just for allergies, airways. Yeah, just like at a Pulp Fiction, you know, when he yeah, heart. yeah, to get rid of the inflammation, maybe or something. Oh, well, yeah. draw whatever. Restart, restart her. Uh, yeah, I think she had a heroin over uh -huh. Pulp Fiction. She had a heroin overdose, and they uh, I think it was like um, uh -huh. to start the heart up again. Well, that's something totally different. Yeah, but I'm sure. But yeah, I get what you're saying. It's kind of like a snake bite kit. Yeah, it opens up your airways and you can breathe better. Oh, and yeah. That's scary. Not a mom block pen crappy, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I am the ant. Hey, Mr. Ant. Long time hey, no see. Ant. How are you? Uh, what else we got here? to be finally right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marty Evans. Hi, guys. Love listening to the experts learning a lot. Oh, hey, man. You know, we're just watch collectors. I don't know about experts, but Enthusiasts. we're ex experts at spending money on watches for 
X number of years, I suppose. Yeah, I'm definitely good at that. Allergies suck. I mean, literally, I, I had allergies, horrendous allergies, like a week or two ago. I've literally been, every day I've been taking like two sprays in the morning. Well, yeah, I, I, I get them. Yeah, exactly. I've, I started in my mid-30s, earlier 30s, uh-huh. and I never had them before, and it was crazy. And now twice a year I die with them. Right now I got them a little bit, and so, yeah. Yeah, and Oklahoma is the worst. Oh my God, we've is got an right? allergen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, he said that. You could hear him say yeah. hi. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can hear everything he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> now, Booster, Booster, we carefully ascertain that Rich Buddy is on headphones. Oh yeah. Okay. He can't. So hear they can't hear us for sure. Yeah. Let's see here. There you go, uh, Rooted Rotor. I just put my email in the chat box for you to see. Um, now, is that also your PayPal address? Me? My PayPal address? I don't know what my PayPal address is. I'm not looking for any, any donations, at least not right now. <laughs> yeah, that, you, know, you know what? You know what? I've been... I've been, I started live streaming, what, seven months ago, and I, I have just over 100 subscribers, that's all. I, I haven't, you know, solicited people, I haven't, uh, even Archie told me it was okay to mention it on his channel, and I said, you know what, that's okay, I don't want like a thousand people overnight. Uh, it, it, it just feels like I would have to um, really... Uh, okay. What's be, the gain a lot of people, that seems, seems like a big responsibility. Now, Clive, are you an okay? Are you am I a Sooners fan? They'll decimate the West Virginia Mountaineers this week. Well, uh, yeah, because football is the only thing we have going in this piss ant state. So, no, I, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I swear to God, if it wasn't for high school football, we probably wouldn't even have high schools in this <laughs> God for thinking hellhole. I find most Oklahoma Sooners fans hate me because I am a Florida. Uh... Why? And Hotsy fans. fans. Why? Fair weather. Why? With a basically a tendency to be a little bit douchey. Crap, he's asking when my kid gets older, what will you buy him or her for the first watch? I have two boys, uh, Crappy, and my oldest one is eight years old. So I'm kind of guessing that, and you know what? They're both left-handed. So I'm thinking a Tudor Pelagos. The left-hand drive? Yeah. You know, actually, the hub, the hub row. Have you noticed that uh, I'm left-handed as well, Rich? Have you ever noticed Yes, I've noticed that. Uh-huh. Wouldn't that be, I've noticed that. Wouldn't that be a great first watch for my kid? I think that's a great watch. I mean, I've, 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 I have lusted after his Pelagos LHD, and it's just like that... You know, I, I like that. I like it in gray. I don't like it in blue. Blue, it's cartoony. But gray, it looks like it's more of a serious watch. Love that thing. So I've there's never, my email up on screen. If anybody needs my email, I've only seen the Pelagos inside the case, and it looks like it's how big is that watch? That's a four. That's got to be a forty-three, huh? Well, okay, West Virginia David R. Did he say the Tudor Pelagos for a first watch? Well, <laughs> is that a little maybe, overboard? Maybe a little overboard. Maybe maybe a first serious watch if they can, you know, get Timex or something like that. They won't lose it. Well, well, maybe I give them my ball watch as a first watch or my Doxa. Yeah, you know, by that time. David R. My, I was uh, fifteen with my first yeah. serious watch, which was the yeah. Steel and gold date just. It's I still have it. It's my first one. I love it. Well, I, I would suggest you uh, give the kids something. You know, keep in mind the kids you might be likely to destroy them or lose them. So you should get them something that no one really you really cares about, like uh, Victorinox. Oh well, well I I did get my son his first watch actually. Um, hold on, it's right here. Remember. Yeah. 
Oops, wait a minute. I lost my, uh, I'll pull it up here. Hold on. Next to was saying, Rich, your son is the loudest voice on the stream, just saying. Oh, okay. I know he's probably making no <laughs> sense. Okay, I'll, um, I'll, 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 all kids, uh, all kids first watches nowadays are, uh, Apple watches. I think. Here's well, my, most... here's my eight year old's first watch. <laughs> that I got him. So that's his first watch, and he loves it. Very nice. That's a good watch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thirty bucks. Yep. Twenty-five bucks. Yep. Oh, Victor says he's backstage. Rich, I'm on the show now. All hey, right. Rich. Welcome, Victor. Hi there, buddy. Okay, so who do we have here? We have Clyde, Rich, me, and who else? Bud, the stud. Who? I'm sorry. Bud. Bud, 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 is, Bud has a great, great collection of watches, and he just. Yeah. Up there, yeah. How you doing? He just yeah, picked up an off today, or not today? I've been last talking week. to you a little bit. I've been talking to you on Instagram a little bit, Victor. Oh, okay. Awesome. I got the I got the Aquanaut that I told you I sold, and then bought it back again. Oh, you're the one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, you're the one. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, you ended up getting, I remember you said you sold it when it was high, but now you're trying to get it back. Did you get it back? I got it right here. On a price up for, oh, mm -hmm. newer, newer, newer example on a, for a lower price. Oh, wow. Do you mind me asking how much? Well, it was, so I, I, I the original one I bought for 28 and I sold it for 36.5. Okay. So I made 8,500 on that one. And then this one I gave 32.5 with the bracelet. Wow, and it's it's a 2019, and it's uh, I've got the bracelet and the strap. Where did you strap, get it? Strap is uncut. I've only got it like uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. From a wh where did you get oh, it? No, I got I got it from a, a local guy here that uh, that I, I kind of a flipper that I deal with off and on. Where so, are you? Like what part of the country are you in? Colorado. Okay, that's that's the version I have. It's amazing. I love that watch. Yes, it is. It's. Uh, I I told Rich that uh, when I had the strap, I said, "Man, I said I'm probably going to sell it. I wish I wish I had the bracelet." And so when I sold it, I kind of felt like I missed it. And then when I seen one with the bracelet, that was it. So yeah, I wanted it back ever since. Yeah, I'm wearing. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can show you guys. Actually, it actually is. I, I just sold it. Um, I'm actually selling this piece. This is the 5960. Right. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, that's a nice piece, man. You know, I know you're only getting rid of it because you picked up the black dial. Yeah, because I want the black dial. So I um, there's a guy in Dubai, or he's actually in Kuwait, but I think we're gonna meet in Dubai, which is so cool. And that's who you're selling it to. Yeah, because it's like, you know, we were talking and um, he wants to, you know, we don't want to do like we would, both of us would rather do face to face. So we we're talking, maybe he'll come to the United States. And I was like, you know what, how about we meet in Dubai? Because I've been wanting to go forever and it's like an hour away from him. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Hopefully it'll happen. And they have Dubai Watch Week. Hopefully I can uh, time it during Watch Week, which would be so cool. Maybe you could meet him in Syria. No, thank you. I've been to Syria. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't want to go back to Syria. So uh, Blue Shirt said, let's kick in some extra bucks to get uh, crappy his first luxury watch, the OP39. I'll throw in some money. I, I, I think he contributes to the watch community. I'll tell you that after seeing that white OP thirty nine here on Craigslist, it's uh, I'm I'm really tempted. That's a, and that's a good deal on that. I know you're not too far from here, uh, crappy. I know, well, you're in you're in Washington or you're in Portland, right? Yeah. But uh, now, Rich Brady, Rich Brady's been doing an editorial comment. Crappy needs to beg on his own stream, but I can't support people to watch that stream. It is a good one. <laughs> well, I have a question for everyone. Is anybody going to the watch time event, not this weekend, but the following on the 24th, 25th, 26th? Uh, probably not. I, already, I booked the tickets. I'm already, I'm, I'm going. I, I've never been to that event, but I have a friend who, who, uh, who's going, so I just booked them. I don't know what to expect. 
Well, the thing is, you need to appear on Archie as much as you can between now and then, and maybe see so if you can get press credentials, claiming that, you know, basically, then you can claim cardinal status. <laughs> if I get press credentials at the, the event? Yeah. Well, I can do my best. I've, there's a couple people on Facebook that I've seen are doing pretty Bye. big. You'll get where, it. where is that event at? It's in Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan, okay. It's so it's a dinner on Friday night, and then a whole like event, something with like classes, session, something on Saturday. I don't even know what. So you can get a press badge and uh, maybe strap on horns. <laughs> so they'll confuse me with Archie. <laughs> I, I think there's a lot more I have to do for them to confuse me with Archie. Mm -hmm. uh, put on a lot of weight, lose a lot of hair, and uh, let go of a lot of class. Welcome, uh, Logan Easter. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, the, the watch time event. I, 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 I missed it. I, I got so close to going to the one here in LA, but I missed it. Uh, I heard it was a good event. In New York, it's tickets are cheap. Oh, I think yeah, probably I, not that bad, right? I think it's. I think I paid like um, there's a whole dinner on Friday, so it includes all that. I think I paid maybe a hundred dollars or something. So it's is not. It this, is it this weekend, Victor? Not this weekend. It's the uh, the weekend of the so ten days ten days twenty uh, fifth twenty sixth. Okay. Yeah, so, but but, but you have to make sure that you go to the evening event before and and not even the event the day after. You just want to go to the evening event. Is where, that right? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's where you're gonna uh, you pay a little extra to go to that. There's gonna be wine and hors d'oeuvres, and you get to meet the watch people and look at some of the watches and. You don't get to do that the next day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have um, I have tickets for both things. Yeah, but I, I it it was more expensive for the um the Friday night thing. So the, the Friday night is for people like you oh. and us, and the other one is for guys that aren't serious about buying. Huh. Okay. Yeah, well, crappy Friday is one hundred and nineteen, and Saturday is fifty nine. I get. I don't. Maybe. Maybe that's right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You just need to go to the Friday night. But if you're there already, you might go to Saturday too. But. Yeah, I'm already booked for uh, for the whole weekend. There you oh, go. Well, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to start getting ready for bed. So, but thanks for having me on, Rich. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for joining us. I, I really always love it when you're on here. Thanks for everything. Appreciate you. Have a good evening, Clive. All right. Hey, Vic. I'll be up for a little bit more if the live stream ends. Give me a holler. Okay. All right. Later, buddy. Later, Bye. friend. Take it easy. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, baby. <laughs> so baby. Blue Shirt says he's going. You're going to be going, huh, Blue Shirt? Right on. Because he's in New yeah, York, so it's right there. Okay. Yeah, he looks close by. Yeah. Well, if anyone, I mean, I, I wouldn't recognize anybody, but if I, if, I've been on the show a few times, so if anyone sees me, come say hello. I love to talk watches or meet people. Rhode Island, I think Blue Shirt Buddha's in, so I don't think he's too far from there. Oh, okay. That's a but, uh, but Victor, you're in uh, you're in Atlanta, right? Yep, I'm in Atlanta. Oh, I thought you were in Texas. Okay. I got married Georgia. in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, we're in Atlanta. Uh, Buckhead, right there. And, uh, gosh, 20 years ago, just when that mall of Georgia was starting, you know, it had just been built not too long before that. Yep, I live in Buckhead. Yeah, you live in Buckhead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boy, that was that was a neat place. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's for me, it's like the perfect. Perfect little. It's not too urban. It's far from downtown. It's yeah. got all the watch stuff here, so I'm happy here. Yeah, I uh, you know the Houston's that was down there in Buckhead. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still here. I believe it's yeah, still. I yeah. I went down there the morning that I got married and had six screwdrivers. <laughs> the, the, the good orange screwdrivers there, and that's how I got myself to the altar. And uh, <laughs> then we. There was a hotel there called, I think, the Georgian or something, a big, big hotel there at the Blue Hair, and that's yeah. where, that's where we stayed before we took off on our honeymoon. So, but yeah, it's a nice, nice place, Atlanta is. Yeah, uh, Miami James is asking me how much am I asking? It's I, it's going for the I've agreed on a price with the person for mid hey. mid forties. Miami yeah. James for cool. the big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blue Shirt Buddha. I saw that Bill Sanders was hosting. Um, before and after, I mean, I'm a few of, the, few of those. The oh, and he is going to be there again this year too. He says, "Crappy Luxury" says he is going to be there too. 
that uh, Bill is going to be there. Oh yeah, yeah. Bill was posting that he's gonna um, he's gonna host some like events, um, like a coffee shop thing before the or I don't remember, but like before or after. But I'll have to take a look where people can meet up. So that'll be cool. So is there anything on your radar right now, Vic, that you're thinking of picking up? Yeah, actually, this week I expect a panda. Um, I well, it's it's been paid for and it's it's already mine. It just hasn't been hasn't arrived yet. And then also, okay, so here's the deal. I'm I'm saying this with a grain of salt because my AD told me this with a grain of salt, but he told me that there's a really good chance that I'll have the Pepsi, the Hulk, and the Daytona and the Panda by Thanksgiving. I don't believe it until I see it. But if that happens, you know, there, there must be something going on, Victor, because my AD just told me the same. I have the Panda, but he said the Hulk and the Pepsi he expects to have before Christmas. Awesome. And earlier this year, that was not a possibility. Huh. So yep, I think something is happening. I think the gates are opening. Yep. Gates are opening. People slowing down a little bit, you know, maybe worrying about the economy. Not buying as much, maybe. That's true. That's possible. See, in my businesses, I haven't felt um, anything as far as the economy. So, I mean, that's normally the first place for me to feel it. If instead of, I don't really want, I don't really believe the news. They're, right. always, you know, hypersensitive. Right. So when I start no. seeing in my businesses, then I start worrying. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't felt it either yet. But I always, it's always a worry, obviously. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it's. It is. There's something going on because he got me two watches in the last couple of months, and then he's got. He thinks he's got two more coming pretty soon. So. Do you, do you guys? You know, I kind of thought that the variable in the equation that is creating what you're just talking about is this. I don't think it's an extra supply of watches coming. I think it's that so many people, like myself and other people, have already acquired these watches and there's less people out there that need them. You think it's, it's possible to some degree, you know, I think that too, but then why, you know, the Daytona has been popular for God knows, you know, 20 years or so, you know, it's never, you know, all the people who wanted it never ran out for some reason. Well, I agree that I, I think people was passing on, you know, like I told you, uh, Rich, I think people was passing on the watches, and that's why I got the call the other day. Uh, and, uh, um, and that was for the yeah. Batman Jubilee. And for the which one? Are you passed on the Batman? The Batman, yeah, the Batman Jubilee. Oh, wow. and, no, he picked it up. He bought that. Oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, you did get it. Oh, somebody else passed, and you got it. Okay. I, th I Yeah, I don't think I was the first call. I've bought, you know, a half a dozen watches off him, but... I don't think yeah, it was his first call. I think people are passing yeah, 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 yeah. fear of the you know election and the economy and stuff. But yeah, that, you know, that may or may not be. See, I'm I'm hoping you know, but I was supposed to you know I was there was a chance I was going to get it last week, and you know when they tell me you know because my AD is pretty we're pretty close so like you know I call him like a friend and I'm like so if any deliveries come in, so I was expecting to get Thursday then maybe Friday so now I'm like on my tippy toes like bothering him and i feel bad because you know it's like because he made that you know it's kind of dangerous to say listen uh in the next two weeks you should be getting a watch or two right, right. it's like now i'm like you know i'm like you know i want i want to know and i you know the little kid in me on christmas morning comes out and i just i feel bad asking all the time but i guess the, <laughs> he shouldn't have said that i suppose I think Thursday and Friday is the delivery dates because that's when he's been contacting me lately. Yep, uh, Thursday Thursday's usually the dates, but sometimes it doesn't make it on Thursday. Yeah, um, th this Thursday um, he contacted me with the Sea Dweller, and two weeks ago it was a Thursday for the Batman. Oh, and you turned and you said no to the Sea Dweller. Was well, I got the red I got the red Sea Dweller, and this was just the regular one. So yeah, I said no to that. But, the red uh, one is the good one. Yeah, yeah, I got the red one, so I figured I told him it was just superfluous at this point. But uh, so yeah, I, I'm hoping, like you said, this Thursday, I think something might else be coming. The red one wow. is the SD43, right? 
uh, what is the it? 40, yeah. It's yes, the 43. That's the, that's, yep, that's it. Hung, Hung Farlow says he's getting one in about five weeks. Uh, he's still able to get one? I thought they're discontinued. How are you getting one, Hung? Aren't they discontinued? The red. They're, they're not on the yeah. site. They're not on the website. Wait, wait. The SD43? I, be I yeah. believe it's available. The red. They're not. The red is not. The regular SD43 is available. But oh, okay. Direct. So, so there. It's it's the same. It's 43. Also, I it's thought it was different. The same. Size. No, it's the same exact watch. I believe it's they, just. They uh, have the 44 in this James Cameron and in the regular. Oh, right. because he already got it. Okay, cool, cool. Congratulations, man. I, I was just telling Bud I was interested in possibly a C dweller. I was. I've, I've been looking at some things. Which ones? The the SD, the C dweller. Yeah, uh, the SD forty three red. I mean, I'm 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 not gonna get it, but I, I've just been playing around with the idea, of looking at it. I like it too. And then there's this one that was available for a few years. It's the C dweller, with in forty millimeters. That one I'm considering. It's it's discontinued. That one was a, a you know, I think it was like two thousand. Oh, which one? It, it's a, it's a early two thousand tens. It was a couple of years made. It was the C dweller. But it's in forty millimeters. So it was, you know, the the pre ceramic one was always in forty, and then when they bulked everything up, which is the super cases, they transitioned and the C dollar became ceramic. forty. Yeah, when they went to ceramic and bulked everything up, C dollar went to forty millimeters. But it was, you know, bulked up. That's the one Archie um, was talking about on Saturday, yeah. bud. Yep. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the red. Yeah, Ruder Rotor says uh, C dollar four thousand. That's correct. Yep. The fourth C Dweller four thousand. That's the discontinued one. The yeah, I kind of yeah, want that one. But one Archie was like, talking about. I'm telling you the one. I'm telling you the red line that I just got with the new movement. That one's that one's discontinued. It's not on the site. If if it is available, you can't go on the Rolex site and see it. Maybe they just got rid of it. I was yeah. on after I talked to you today. I was on there. And yeah. I tried everywhere. I, I I know, yeah. We were we were talking about them. We were looking at those, and I sent him a picture of one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the so my um, got the C dweller forty four millimeter is the, just the regular black one, and then it's got the James Cameron, but it do, it just doesn't show the red one. I can't find it. That's weird. Maybe because I know the red one is the red line was the fiftieth anniversary version. I don't want to see if I know. Yeah, Maybe there was a that's the one year. that I was. That's the that's the picture of the one I showed you sent you today, bud. Was the anniversary fiftieth, and that's the one I told you I thought was discontinued. Which uh, I'm not a hundred percent certain if it is. I'm about to look. I can't curious. find I can't find any red Sea Dweller on the Rolex site. So. Uh, it's oh, so I see the James, the James Cameron, and the black one, which he also Maybe. told me that the James Cameron, the new James Cameron with the new movement, might be coming in this week too. Yeah, so so I was looking at that fiftieth um, anniversary, and and you know the place I look at, they had it on here for just for sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, Wait, I, see, I see the red line sea dweller on uh, on the website. Did you? What did you? What did you? What did you search for there when you? I just, you know, you just go to Rolex and then you click on sea dweller and it's the it, it's actually the main picture for sea dweller. Then you go down for the configuration and it shows the forty three in steel and yellow, the forty three red line in steel. Then it goes into the deep sea forty four. Yep, the four models. The so it's the just go, do this. Sea dweller, and then go to the um, and then go down to the configure, and you can see all four versions. Huh. The forty four is way too big on me, but the forty three is okay. For, I I, I kind of like the forty three. I would yeah, the, uh, yeah. I feel the same way. The forty three works, and. Uh, the 44, I think, is going to be too big. Yeah. If I did the 44, it would have to be the James Cameron because I was offered the 44 regular. I, I had to turn it down. This week that I turned down, yeah. People are loving the 
people are loving the two-tone. I hear people talk good about it, but I don't know if it's actually selling. The two-tone what? Which, the which two-tone? two-tone? The, the oh, two-tone one. what? Sea Dweller? Yeah, the one that came out this year. I think that is the most ludicrous piece ever made. I mean, a, a, a heavy, deep, professional dive watch in two-tone, yeah. it just doesn't <laughs> even make sense. Even if even if it's a desk diver, you know you're not going diving. It just, just doesn't make sense. You know, I don't know why they did it. Plus, like, if you, want, if you want that look, you can get a Submariner with the black and gold. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Or a GMT watch. There's other options. Exactly. I think they're just trying to sell the, I think they're trying to get the steel and gold back in there. Oh, wow. What Rolex's website is showing, um, they're showing like vintage models. Like, oh, wow. The vintage Sea Dweller is part of their, um, it's just like one of the screen pictures. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get. I'm hoping to get. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, three. If I get two of them, because I'm owed the Daytona. The Daytona's already, you know, done for. It's already mine. It's just I've been waiting forever. But the other two, God, if I get them both in like the next few weeks, I would, I would, I don't know what would do. So the Hulk was this other one, and then the Pepsi you said was the third one. Yeah, Pepsi and the whole. Nice, man, nice. Th that's what I've ordered and I'm oh, yeah, hoping to get is. is the Pepsi. I want that Pepsi. I want the Pepsi yeah. Steel Jubilee. That's what I want. I got the Hulk. I got the Daytona. I want that Pepsi. Yeah. I stand, I stand correct. Oh, you have, to... <laughs> you have this. Yeah, it's right there. Wait, so Rich, do you have the pre-ceramic or the ceramic Daytona? Um, I've got uh, one of each. Oh, wow. Here's my here's my watches right here. That's what I got. Oh my goodness! Wow, you are a force to be reckoned with. That is beautiful, Patek Rolex. You are speaking my language. <laughs> oh wow! I am just like googly eyed right now. Oh hey, I don't I like all the Pateks you got, but I got an Aquanaut coming. There I you got go. that Aquanaut coming, and then and then I have and then I I am on order for a Chronometra Blue. Oh wow! So those... oh my gosh, how how are you getting that? I tried. I don't have. They're not local. Nah, so it would, it's something I'm, I'd be waiting for, and it's something that would get added later on when it comes. It just uh, right now I, I'm looking at getting that Aquanaut and hopefully a Pepsi. And I don't think I'll add anything else other than that Chronometra Blue. Well, the, F, the FP Journal, are you paying, would you pay retail if you get it? Yes. That's, that's a, that's okay, a five-year awesome. wait. That's a five-year wait. Yeah. And, and, I and, I'm not, and, I, and I don't want to try to push it because I got, uh, you know, the Aquanaut I want to get. It, and I bought half these watches uh, this year. I bought half these watches this year, so I, I I need to slow down and just wait for the other watches to come when they in their due time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's always a balance. I mean, I I always wonder because yeah, I did get the Aquanaut and I got the Nautilus at the same not the same time, but like within about a month of each other. So, but in fairness, I did have to buy another very expensive watch to get the Nautilus. So now it's like you know I feel bad pushing, even though my every time I'm there. I feel bad if I don't push. So my sales are going to push it for me. Um, let's see. Let's see. A crappy wants to know what's the watch on the bottom right. That's the tag hewer stopwatch, Blue pocket watch. Timer. Blue Shirt Buddha, why are you such a dick to me? He's always talking <laughs> crap in the comments to me about him. <laughs> He's... What a troll. Max is right. Anyway. That's the tag stopwatch. And then what else? Um, what is the top, Rich? What's the top left one? The top left. That's a Universal Geneve. Oh, that's beautiful. 1950 yeah. vintage in rose gold. Rich goes vintage. I'm afraid to go vintage. I just 37 millimeter. That. And then the With one you, below I, it is uh, Speedmaster Vintage. Yeah. 
that, okay, that okay. um the vintage is, is is risky i want to go vintage but I don't want to get screwed. I don't either. That's you know, n neither oh. neither do I. But I really wanted a, a Universal Geneve vintage watch. I really, really wanted one badly. And and you know what? They were very affordable. I got that for twenty seven hundred dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, and then the Speedmaster below it. I wanted one Omega in my collection, and it had to be a pre moon Speedy. You know, all original, everything, and and. And I had to pull the trigger and take the risk on that one too. So those are my only two vintage. What is that? What is that black and red strap uh, watch there, Rich? Th that's a ball. That's my ball watch. That's when I really need to, when I need to go somewhere. That and the Doxa. Um, oh, shit. What does this kid do? Okay. I'm back. Wait a minute. I'm afraid to keep that many watches at home at one time. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, me? Yeah. Well, I am. I mean, you know what? I I'm uh, I'm home 24 hours a day, bro. You know, um, and I'm and and, and I, you know, I don't talk about my security, but dude, I'm everything's locked down. I got. And you have a gun. So I got gun. I got gun safes. You know, bro. There's nothing. Yeah. They, they'd have to kill me, bro. Because I'm, I'm, sh I'm a shooter. Yeah. Shoot first, think later. Dude, I, I, I got, I got guns in every room, and and uh, um, I even used to carry one on my body. And once in a while, I'll do. So it's a hit and miss. So Robert Padilla says, "What year is considered vintage?" I think it's, I think it's actually, I don't, th I, I think it's before ninety. I don't think it has to be an 81, does it, Rich? Uh, I don't know. What do, you, what do you consider vintage, Vic? You know, that's a good question. I'm wondering if it's pre for me, because if I say pre-90, then I start feeling really old. Well, but my but 90, it is. It probably is. My 95 day just, I consider vintage. You know, uh, you know I, I consider vintage uh, when I was a kid. So I'm gonna say now 1970s or prior to 1970s. I, I I can't say anything after 1970s is vintage, just not in my mind. Yeah, I mean, cause cause when you think of other collectibles that are vintage, like what's a vintage car or vintage a vintage Coke bottle? What year are they? I mean, yeah, I guess I would I would go to the 70s to see about vintage cars right now. So there you go. I think you would relate. Pretty equivalent. David says he likes his ball watch. Yeah, I, I've worn it a hell of a lot. It's gotten a lot of his time. And, and I've gone through straps. That's my latest strap. So. Yeah, I can't wait for uh, I can't wait for the straps to get on in on this. Uh, 5167. I want to try the green one and uh, I'm interested to see what that looks like. Straps make it fun. Really changes the one. Yeah, that, but you're, the rubber B on the Hulk, that's the only, I don't know about that one. I would, I like, I do like straps, but the, uh, yeah, I was just looking at it. Look uh, at that rubber B on there, bro. Oh man, I love it. I'm wondering with the okay, so the Hulk with the green, okay, and the date, mm, yeah, it's the it, I guess because I have Oyster Flex and it has the solid end link, it changed like, you know, it's like a completely different look. It like changes the whole appearance when you have that solid end link. Do you uh, like the Oyster Flex? Uh, Vic? Some people, I, I love it. Don't say this much. I love it because of the quality. It's very so. I have the Aquanaut and this, so the quality of the Oyster Flex is supremely better. It's like incredible quality, but the Aquanaut rubber strap is much more comfortable. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's Interesting. like when the Aquanaut is going to be the most comfortable walk you ever, 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 ever wear. It wow. Nothing on your wrist. It's like, wow. yeah, I, wear the, I, wear, I wear it at home. It's like, I'm talking about on the rubber strap, but on the bracelet, it's like, cause you, you have it on the bracelet. It's silky, it's smooth. It's very comfortable on the bracelet too, but on the rubber, Man, is it like invisible? 
Yeah, the first one I had was on rubber, and it was yeah, it was uh, it was amazing. I really, it really was. And does that rubber, the longer you have it, does it does it uh, form to your hand more at all, or the the um, the, the what's Aquanaut. Oh, the Aquanaut. Um, I don't, you know, I haven't had it for that long, so I can't say. I've had, I got it in uh, July, so okay. I can't really say. But what I, um, you know, but when I have them right now, I have the Aquanaut in the safe. So when I have them both, like when I have my Oyster Flex and I have my Aquanaut both at home, if right. I put on the Aquanaut and then like I want to switch it over to the Oyster Flex, I can't because it's like so uncomfortable in yeah. comparison. But it, but now the the Aquanauts in the safe and the Oyster Flex at home. It's like if I don't have the Aquanaut around, it feels perfectly comfortable. Right. I don't have anything to compare it to. Just the comparison, yeah. Yeah. Cause they those flaps, they they I guess they push on you, but if you're wearing it, you know, all the time and you don't have anything better to compare it to, it just uh it feels fine. But yeah, I mean I just love the way the Oyster Flex looks and it doesn't wear like you can scratch it you can rub it you can do anything and it won't um you know it won't show any signs of age or anything and the aquanaut's a little different because the rubber is very thick right and it's pretty inexpensive to change if you want it's only like 200 bucks well i love the um i, I love the rubber I, I fell in love with the rubber uh the rubber straps i'm in love with them me too. The, the Rubber B Company. Um, I'm gonna say the Everest straps were shit. I didn't like them. Uh, that's a personal opinion. But when it came to the Rubber B, um, the Rubber B, and on the Daytona, it's yeah, integrated yeah. into the clasp. Yeah, that I love. That, that is so badass. Oh, so on the Hulk, it's it's a tang buckle. On the Hulk, they don't give you a choice. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it does suck. Especially because the glide lock is like so cool. Right. Yeah. But they give you a take. But you know what? It's worth it because the, the look of the look it gives on this strap. Yeah. Is phen is phenomenal. I and love that, rubber. I love it so much. Yeah. I, I I wasn't wearing this watch. I had this watch for about three years, uh, completely unworn with stickers. Oh my god. And uh, and I only just started wearing it when I got the strap this summer. Wow. So brand new watch to me. That's unheard of. <laughs> the Hulk was just sitting there. It was just sitting there, literally three years unworn with full stickers on the whole damn thing. You know, when I was, the Hulk is an interesting watch because at the beginning, when I start, first started collecting, I could have gotten the Hulk, but I didn't want it because it would have been like my only watch or, and I thought the black would have been better. But when you have a larger collection, the Hulk starts making sense because it's interesting and it's unique. It's not like your one watch. I think if you have one watch, if you're going to pick one sub and you only have one watch, it should be the black one. But if you have a collection, it should be the green one. Yes. So vintage, I say, yeah, I mean, I would say nine, before pre-90. Pre, yeah. Well, and yeah, and, and, and if you um, don't have to go too far back, there's a good chance you're not going to get ripped off either. So yeah. You know, the more you vintage... But you get ripped off with like brands like Rolex, like you're Universal. You're probably not gonna have a problem. You're not gonna have a problem with that. Like, there's no counterfeits for Universal Geneve, and that's exactly what the watchmaker told me when I took it to him. Yeah, you're not gonna. People aren't are duplicating parts and replicating and and switching out Franken watches. All that stuff. He said the same thing with the Speedmaster. That's partially true because people, I've I've never seen a good replica. Well, not that I know, but I've never seen like on the posts on the forums. Nobody really. Post Omega replicas. I, have you seen them? No, no. It's not know. worth. It's not worth counterfeiting. Yeah, the price point's too low. Correct. And yeah, yeah and you're not going to rip off a guy who's looking at vintage Speedmasters because he's going to know what he's looking for. Exactly. And then people don't go get an Omega to show off. Like you get Omega Speedmaster if you're a collector and you appreciate watches. It's not. It doesn't have that. You don't get the the common folk who wants a fake watch to look cool. Yes. You get a fake Omega. That's They're exactly cool. a good point. They yeah. want only blingy watches are, yeah. are faked. They right. want Rolex, they want Paddock, maybe an AP, but yeah, Rolex is, is the main, the big dog. Robert Padilla do you, says, do you uh, have any? good night, Blue Shirt Buddha. 
Good night, Blue Shirt. Do you uh, do you have any AP, uh, Victor? Good question. Uh, good question. Yeah, I have. Okay, so I have a actually a really good question because I'm trying to get a new one. I have a fifteen um, four hundred, but it's so big and it's. I need. I want to. Uh, well, how big? A uh, fifteen four hundred. Yeah, it's a forty. 40. It's 41 mil, but it wears like a 43 mil. It wears uh, 44 even. It's really big. I can show Really? It. It's just, yeah, it's like. Do you know it, your wrist size? I Yeah, it's, I have a six and a half inch wrist. Oh, wow. Yeah. That really wears large on you. Holy smokes. I'll show you. It's because I have it. I took it out because I always try to. I always. Um, I always. Um, I, I, uh, you're lucky you have a smaller wrist. You have a much bigger, uh, universe of watches you can buy. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And even affordable. It's like, yeah, that looks like a monster, bro. It is so big. It's like, it's like ridiculously big. So, yeah. So I, um, I, um, hey, I might take it out off your hands one day if you need me to. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, if I, if I get my, if I, well, see. AP, here's the thing. AP, oh, don't scratch my bracelet now. Be careful. <laughs> I am like <laughs> super careful with my watches. So <laughs> with my um, with uh, with the AP, so they just opened in Atlanta, and so I'm trying to build a relationship with them so I can get the 15202, which is the um, which is the um, the uh, the jumbo. The the okay, yeah. If I get that, then I'm definitely selling, and if I don't. If I, you know, I'm going to try and try and try. If I can't get that, then I might go with the 15300, which is uh -huh. nude in 39 mil. And then I would let go of the 15400. Yeah, the new one is the 39 mil, right? That's the one that I was thinking, uh, I think. The 15500? The 15500 yeah. is the same. No, it's 41. It's yeah, it's, it's 41. Like, oh, to the 15 it has a new motor. That's all the different. Yeah. But the 15202, that's like the collector's watch. That's the one that's the original. It's like exactly how Genta designed it, but it's a perfect size. 39? Yeah. Right. 39, yep. So, that's what I'm thinking because I have a small wrist as well, and I was thinking that 39 would be pretty. Everybody tells me if you if you want an AP, get the size smaller than you normally wear. Yeah. So I think 39 would be better. Oh, I'm I'm gonna have to go try some on before I decide what a what one day I'll pull the trigger on. Absolutely, because the 37, it just is too small, and I try to make it. I try to, you know, because the 37 wears maybe like, I don't know, a little bit bigger, but it still wears small. Like the 39 is perfect, and then when you have like such a good watch next to it, versus like I don't want to settle for a 37 mil small version. I don't want to sit up for the 41 big version. I want the right size, the Goldilocks size. Right. So I can't I can't pull the trigger on the 37. So I might as well wait for the um the 39. But the 15300, which was prior to the 15400, was 39. It's discontinued. That's an option because it's cheaper. Um if I get it on the secondary market, I can get it for about 22 or so, 20. Um so that might be an option, but that's the same price as the 15202 brand new if I can get it. I see. Easter says, Victor, the 15450 would look yeah. flawless on six and a half inch wrist. Yeah, but the 15450 Easter, that's the, that's the 37 mil. And I tried it on and it's still small on me. That's the problem. Really? I mean, 37 yeah. still? Even, yeah. 30, even though it should wear large? Yeah, even though it wears. Even though it wears large, um, yeah, I I tried. I really wanted it to fit well. You know, so AP is considering getting – I may be getting an AP soon because there's a chrono that just came out. It's 38 mil. I tried it on in rose gold. It's a tad smaller than I'd like because I'm already used to APs wearing a little big, just not as big as 41. So the 39 is ideal. They have a 38 coming out. Their, their, first ship, their first batch is coming in, and I might get one. But, you know, at this point, I have a lot of watches coming in. I have these two or three Rolexes potentially coming in, you know. And, and then if this AP comes in, that's already – and I spent so much on padding. And, and then that means you got to flip to the Patek and the AP. So you got to slow it down a little bit, catch up. If, yeah, if I, if I want to take – if these watches are all offered to me, I might have to offload. Because I don't normally sell watches, but I might offload some that I'm not wearing. 
because I don't want to say no to these awesome watches that are being offered. But right, right. I just can't. I can't be spending like that. But you know, if they offer me, it's a brand new. It's a it's a chronograph in thirty eight mil. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful watch. It's a tad small, but I think I would buy it if offered. So we'll see. So you have yeah. an AP. There is an AP there in Atlanta. Yeah, they just. Oh, it's actually really interesting what happened. So they just opened about um about a month and a half ago. I you know I made friends with everyone there. I already know everyone. In the last week, everybody has quit or got fired. It's like under huh. crazy what's going on there. Yeah, there was a, a an AP dealer here. He wasn't just AP, but uh, but yeah, he recently got the AP taken off of him. But I don't think it was just him. I think it's. Something going on with the APs, right? Well, what AP is doing is they're they're becoming they're going in house vertical integration, so they're 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 getting rid of all their um, you know like distribution network where they have authorized dealers. AP has their own boutique, so when you see an AP boutique, that's owned by AP. They're trying to get rid right. of their you know distribution network and go directly into like sell directly through their own. <laughs> The thing about that is, if you don't have an AP in your town, exactly, you can't you can't buy them because I, I was online two years ago trying to buy them, and I was on the phone two years ago trying to buy them, and they were just you got to buy them from the store from the boutique. Exactly right, and you have to build that relationship, and you can't you have to build that relationship. There. So yeah, so I they just opened. I've been building. I've been trying, but the thing is, nobody who works there knows watches. They all came from like. Other retail shops in the mall, Prada, Louis Vuitton, none of them know watches. So nobody knows how to allocate. Like, they don't know. So you was, know. Yours, was your model sitting there in the store? Was it there? No, no, no. no. That, that's, that's older. Okay. That's, that's, I haven't worn it, but it's, I've had it for a little while. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just no, didn't know if they had them sitting there. No, they only have crappy watches sitting there. All the good ones are in the back, but they don't know how to. The vice president of, the, of mayors, it's under Watches of Switzerland. It's like, right. so he's the one deciding on who gets everything. But right. since there's no, there's no history, purchasing history, so he can't a good tell. Chance. Well, yeah, that gives me a good chance. But he also, you know, can't tell if a person's a flipper. So nobody's getting anything yet until someone starts establishing some right. history. But I don't want to establish history with the uh, code 1159. Right. So. You know, Yeah, the guy, the guy that had one here, he had mostly the uh, the forty four millimeter offshores, and they was just huge, and yeah. that's all he he yeah. had them, and he had the divers. And he probably had some hublots too. He had hublots, and he was actually <laughs> trying. He was trying to sell me the Ulysses Narden, and he pushed so hard on the Ulysses Narden, which I like a couple of them, but I was I was looking for an AP. Yeah, he tried to he tried to sell me so hard on the Ulysses that I walked out of the store not buying nothing. Oh, at and retail? Like this is a retail yeah, place? This is a retail store that just shut down. It, it shut down this spring, but it was open for a year when I when I found it. It was open for you know a year, and yeah. I was in there two or three times. And every time I went in there, he tried to sell me everything except for an AP. And I don't know if the margin was different, but I just wound up getting sick of them, and I just left without buying nothing. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Two things: they get a higher commission, a on these on these other watches, and then he can't sell you an AP that he can't that he doesn't have. You know, right? Exactly. So, yep. Yeah. So UN, I love. I think that's the number one most underrated brand, but never at retail because they're so soft. They're like the softest brand ever. You can but, get a great deal on a UN Perpetual Calendar. Yeah. You know, you can get an amazing deal on that. Yeah, I mean, Robert Robert the, Padilla right. says there's a new Mont Blanc store that opened in Los Angeles, and all the employees don't know anything about the products. They seem to be from Burberry and other clothing brands. I don't think a real watch salesperson would gravitate towards Mont Blanc for a job position. Right. See, that's a little bit different. Mont Blanc, I get it because you are selling leather goods. Their watches are are, are growing, but AP is just AP, and nobody knows watches. That's a more and I get it, Robert. That's I hear what you're saying and I feel you, but it's even worse if, if AP doesn't have because it's a Trinity watch. Mont Blanc is you know working their way up. Yeah, if you don't know if you don't know what you're selling in that type of style, then you shouldn't be in there selling. 
Yeah, they 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 don't know anything. Their their training is like they're. I mean, they're being told like they're being trained, but you know, you really don't. You can't really learn everything the way that we know about watches unless you have a passion for it. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I, similar to that up in the up in the Ben Bridge up here. The I was just looking at a Tudor Pepsi, and and uh, this is this is six months ago again, and he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like that, that was like the hottest watch for him. I said that's I said that's your best watch, brother. I said that's, that's your, <laughs> everybody wants that. You don't know it, and uh, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I can tell you had no idea. He totally looked it up in the catalog when you left. Oh, as soon as that, yeah, he was just clueless, so I couldn't believe it. <laughs> that's funny you should have told him um you should have told him that's your second best selling watch next to grand seiko because they I don't you should... <laughs> they don't carry grand seiko right <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> he probably would have said yeah i know that uh -huh. <laughs> i know actually know somebody who's selling a tudor pepsi i i considered it but i can't i mean i don't think i can get into tudor it's i try but it's like it just is so reminiscent of rolex and since I, I have do, Rolex, I do have a Tudor Pepsi, and and I'll tell you, they are they are high quality at that lower dollar. So yeah, they're, like that, Robert. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 pretty. I I, I like it. It's uh, um, but it's a very thick watch. It's it's very it's. I think it's thicker. It's it's about the same thickness as my Sky Dweller, and it's but it's a steel watch, so it's it's kind of a weird. The heaviness with that lighter bracelet is kind of weird. But, yeah. Uh, but it's a nice I, watch. Yeah. But I know what you mean. I agree with you. Yeah. Like for that lower price point, 100%, I would recommend it. But when you hold it next to a sub, it just yes. competes with it. And it's, it's, it's slightly less than, even though it's probably better value bang for buck, it's still, you know, like an AP and a paddock and a Rolex, they're all different. But right. a Tudor and a Rolex are too similar. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's true. But, uh, um, and I, and I have a air King and I'll be honest, I, I think I like the Tudor Pepsi better than the air King, but I, I don't know. It's, I, I love all of them. So it's hard to, what year is your air King? The air Kings a 2019. Oh, okay. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So that one was bought. These are watches that I bought that basically to, you know, they had them and he called me up and he had them and just to kind of keep them happy. Um, kind of kept me, kept me in the, kept me in the, the good with him, you know? So same thing with the, the Pepsi, the Tudor Pepsi. So that's awesome. So he, like I said, just out of nowhere, he immediately said the other day, I think I'm going to have the Hulk and the, um, the Hulk and the steel Pepsi within, uh, within a couple months for you. So I, okay. So here's the other thing. Um, there's a. I was told that a hundred watches are coming in, a hundred between now and Christmas. That's a lot. A lot of hundred Rolexes. So that's that in and of itself is 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 a sign that something's happening. I mean, maybe well, maybe it increases during the holiday season anyway. But say that's say that's ten or twelve of the, you know, of the models. more prestigious models. Then you know. That's what you got to think right now. It seems like not a lot of people's buying. So if you're buying anything off of them, then you got to be somewhere in that ten or twelve list, you know. So yeah, no, and I'm I'm definitely up there. They, I mean, I work really hard to build that relationship. You know, like I do charity. I I donate to the manager has like a he he also has like nonprofits and stuff. So I donate a lot there, and you know, I, oh, that's huge. That's a really cool thing. Yeah, I yeah. do. Like, I'm going to like food banks with them, and like, I'm like I, I build relationships outside of the, you know, the the salesperson uh, manager relationship. Right. Hey, uh, Robert. As far as the uh, the car show goes, um, let, let's 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 just say yes for now, and keep that uh, you know on the table, and 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 just let you know. Uh, I don't. I think it's coming up when in like uh, mid November. But let's see if we can make that happen, you know? Let's, like, put it on the table tentatively, man. I got no problem with that. If I can make it down there and everything, that's that's the that's the thing I have to wonder about, figure out. Crappy has been talking about the Mont Blanc all day long. It's got me thinking <laughs> Crappy wants to 
Are you leaning towards Amon Blanc now, Crappy? I think he is. I think he said he was. <laughs> I, I want to answer W. David R.'s question. He said, why buy a watch from a pen company? Um, well, you know, what happened was Minerva was a, was a pretty cool movement maker. Um, and Mont Blanc, which is owned by Richemont, um, purchased this, this company called Minerva, which made pretty cool movements. They made also chronographs. And so they decided they're going to use that movement. Um, Minerva made watches too. They weren't just a movement company, they made, made watches. But they purchased Minerva and they integrated it with Mont Blanc. And so now Mont Blanc is starting to up their game. They're, they're, they're not there yet, but they're definitely on their way up. You know, they'll probably become like, um, like a like a Panerai, I think, at some point. But um, right now, they're they're still a pen company. But eventually, I think they're you know, Richemont is working to rebrand Mont Blanc as a watch company. Also, now that they have legitimate in-house movements, you can probably consider that you might be getting a lot of value for the money that you're spending. But then again, they do have very expensive watches at the same time. Do they? I mean, yeah, they do. Yep. Um, I don't know what the price points are for, for Mont Blanc, really. I, I think they're all over the place, to be yeah. honest. They, they, they probably are. But I think that, um, but Crappy, I think I watched one of Crappy's live streams and I think he, the one that he wants is only like 2,000 or 3,000 or something. Um, so that, I like. Did you guys see Watchbox today? Uh, I felt I was napping. I started watching it and I fell asleep during it. But yeah, he was talking about low end entry level watches, and he said, "Look, if you're looking to oh, yeah. max out at about three thousand dollars, uh, four thousand dollars, he yeah. said there's a lot of good used options to get a seven thousand dollar watch for that three or four thousand yeah. dollar mark and you yeah, he was saying zenith and um what else was he saying um, he even said rolex yeah like he said a couple of other brands right it's in zenith. zenith yeah um uh, yeah right but he's right about that and, we, and we've all been telling crappy that same thing that you know why wouldn't he be, you know i'm trying to i'm thinking about buying my brother a watch because he, he's not into it but like he, I think he needs one. Like every person needs, I think, one nice watch. It doesn't have to be super nice. But I was looking at uh, pre-owned Breitlings. You can get them for like 1500 bucks, even less, 1200 bucks for a really nice watch. And it's not a quartz. It'll be pre-owned. You know, it's not the Navitimer, but it's still a Breitling. And it's 1200 bucks. I mean, that's the price of like, you know, a Movado or, or like a, you know, right. Mako Presages. And yeah. it's not even, and, and it's a decent watch, decent name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and this, uh, this OP, this OP that's only a year old, that's on Craigslist here, it's 4,700. I'm sure the guy had come down. So just, just right in that price range, you can, you can definitely get some nice watches. Yeah. My, um, my first watch was a Vacheron overseas. I paid uh 3,500 for it. Wow, really? It was the first generation. How Drive. long ago was that? What say again? How long ago was that? That was in two thousand and uh let's say two thousand eight. Graduated law school, so it was like a year after two thousand nine. Yeah. Or eight, around there. Before the economy crashed. Do you still have that one? No, when the economy fell, I lost my job, everything went to crap. It was like and I had an apartment that in Manhattan, like that was like super expensive and we were all, nobody knew that, you know, we would all be out of jobs. So right. we find expensive leases and we were all living above our means after, after. Sure. The crash. Yeah. So I, I bought am. that and then I bought a JLC, a limited edition master control ultra thin. That was a beautiful watch. It was a limited, it was a 275th anniversary one. Um, I sold that one, but I got raped on that one. I paid like twelve grand, and I had to sell it for like four thousand. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are talking about Tissot. Um, Jay says that his first mechanical watch was a Tissot, great value. Robert says that he bought his brother a Tissot, and he enjoys it, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I hear. I hear they're. Um, 
they're definitely moving up. Tissot, like their 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 brand name is getting better. Although they're great watches, I think they're great watches. Robert says he's had it for four years and he uses it as his daily watch now, for his for his brother or his friend. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Graffy Vic works hard and spends hard. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Only on watches though. I really don't, I'm really frugal and like normal when it comes to everything else. It's like just watches. Yeah, me, me too, pretty much. You know, I had my little bout with uh, going out to expensive uh, dinners and things like that, but that was in my heyday. Yeah. You know, I, you have to do that. Otherwise, when are you gonna ever do that in your life, you know? Of course, yeah, I used to before watches. I used to spend money on clothes. I used to buy, like, I used to want to live in the nicest, place like all that now now that i spend money on watches it's actually a good thing in a lot of ways because my money is holding up pretty well in the watches and i'm not wasting money on these you know on stuff that's you know yeah and all, all my nice clothes are sitting in the closet when do i get a chance to wear them yeah. i don't I, I mean i don't dress up really much anymore i go to work not that often me too. I have so many shoes. I used to spend so much money on shoes. I have a closet full of expensive ass shoes and I don't wear them, but they're not worth anything. The watches are at least worth some good money. Jay, this is a uh, Snoop Dogg. This is uh, yeah, Long Beach. This is my uh, Long Beach State University. I went to Cal State Long Beach. That's my alumni. And then, and I also, uh, I also, after I graduated from Cal State Long Beach, I went and did upper, upper, uh, work at uh, Cal State Fullerton, Fullerton Titans. The Titans, Cal State University, Fullerton. I want to move to California. That's a great state. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive though. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculously expensive. Like my friend lives in San Francisco. It's like more expensive than Manhattan where I used to live, like it's crazy. Well, um, in Los Angeles, you know, forty miles from me, the uh, a one bedroom rents for twenty five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, a one bedroom rents for twenty five hundred dollars a month. That's why they have such a vast homeless problem there in Los Angeles right now. Because you know about downtown in L.A., just well, in all of L.A. in general. Yeah, all yeah. of L.A. in general is twenty five hundred dollars a month for a one bedroom. It's not even that much over here in Orange County. It's not even that much at all. Wow, twenty five hundred for all that traffic. Jeez. Yeah, in Orange County, I mean, I, I think you can get one bedrooms for a thousand dollars cheaper than that. You know? Yeah, I mean, in Atlanta, Buckhead's expensive, so I can't really compare. But Atlanta's super cheap. Like Atlanta's like the probably the highest standard of living sitting in this country. Like my parents live in a huge house; they pay nothing for it. Buckhead's like a little bit pricey, but I think my brother lives in like um, I think. Lives in like a, it's a three bedroom apartment and it's like, yeah, it's like nothing. It's like probably like less than 1500 a month. If, if I sold my home, my little tiny home here, I can buy a pretty large estate in another state. Oh, yeah. In Atlanta, if you sold your house in California, you could buy a palace in Atlanta. A palace. Yeah, Go on Zillow and look, you'll be like, <laughs> You'll be shocked. I would you get, I, the houses I could, that you could I could buy. probably get ten times the square footage. Mm -hmm. and my parents live in a seven thousand square foot house. It's like huge, and they don't pay. It's like nothing. You wouldn't. You wouldn't believe me if I told you how many square feet my home is. Twenty five hundred. You wouldn't even be able to guess, bro. Fifteen hundred. Eleven hundred. I don't know. You just guessed it, brother. Hundred. Eleven fifty. How many bedrooms? I have, but my, I, my, except, but my, my, my lot is large. I have a, I have a pretty large lot considering, considering large here, not where you're at, but here considering my lot is probably the size of normally what would be three homes. Probably I have a good front lawn, a huge back lawn. That's where the value is, right? But, um, the size of the, the land. Yeah. But, but my home, man, it's, it's less than 1200 square feet, buddy. That's about my apartment's about that size. My apartment's actually a little bigger. It's about fourteen. You know, you know, but um, how many people live? You, your wife, and two kids. Oh wow! Two two young kids. That's like Manhattan living. Yeah, 
absolutely Manhattan. Living. Oh, but, but I but like I said, I have a giant backyard. I mean, yeah, huge backyard. Yeah. You know, I, I have yeah, huge backyard. So it's great for the kids yeah. and and everything. You know, we have yeah. an app. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a pretty good spread. And you have that weather, which is like God, like. In the winter, it's like that's like I, that's I really want to move to California someday. Yeah, and I'm right, and I'm right, I'm right by the ocean, right by the ocean. Oh god, <laughs> that makes me so sad. But um, but but yeah, man. I mean, um, eleven hundred square feet, twelve hundred square feet in, in this house is worth about eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god, go on Zillow. You could see you could buy a nine thousand square foot home. Eight or nine thousand square foot home in the suburbs of Atlanta. They're very beautiful. They're they're like you know quiet, nice, pretty suburbs. Um, and because the land is just you know it's not landlocked, so the prices are really low. Uh -huh. With a pool, with marble, with like nine bedrooms. Well, you know what though, I live in a. I live in a premium neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, uh, the kids' schools are the best in the state. Yeah. I mean, that's they're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're in gate honor classes, you know, my, my eight year old, and if just the, the school system that they're in, that they're going to be set up in for life is going to be all top notch. Yeah. That's important. High school and all of that. Yeah. Plus, you're in California. I mean, I, I, I would, I'm the kind of person I would rather live in a, like, I don't need size. Size is not important to me. As long as it's nice and clean, I'm perfectly happy anywhere. As long as I'm like in a cool place that has stuff to do, like the beach would be so amazing. Yeah. I mean, I don't get around so well anyway. So for me to want a big house, it'd be hard for yeah. me to walk around and move around in my own house. So I have like, injuries. You have like, you have some, how's Dude. your Huh? How's your leg? You had like an injury on your leg, right? Oh, my foot. Yeah, your foot. Oh, I just I just got an MRI and went to all those doctors in the last couple of weeks, and they said that I have a, a bone cyst. Oh, god! And it's deep enough to where they can't uh, orthoscopically operate on it. Yeah. So if, if they want to clean it, they would have to open it, clean it, and then fuse my foot. Oh, that hurts, too. That's a... It's a paid for surgery. So um, they said it's a major surgery, and he advised against it. And he said, "Man, I'm sorry, but to be honest, if it was me, I would just continue wearing the foot brace and consider doing it later in your life." So I'm just like, "Okay, man, I'll listen to you." What the hell? That's, that's, I, would, I would get second opinions. He's like, "If you're in pain, some you know another. It's better to just." you know go through it get it over with but if you can't if you're actually struggling he doesn't know you're yeah i would get a second opinion. yeah that's true so max max debo says in the uk la is portrayed as palm trees rollerblading and beauty's golden beaches <laughs> there is that there totally there is, is that, that. It's for the yeah. rich parts um you know where you can see that uh better with less bums like manhattan beach redondo beach yeah it's all it's not all that max but yeah there is that but la yeah man venice beach um it's scary to even walk with my boy there when when we went there uh, and we took my son there we decided to go for a walk on the boardwalk venice beach the crazy boardwalk right and uh and i grew up down there when I was in high school, I grew up there around Venice Beach and stuff. But uh, but holy smoke, I said, you know what? I said, you know what, son, give me your hand. And I grabbed his hand and I pulled him close to me. I mean, because I, I felt the heat of like predatory men. Really? Looking at my boy. I swear to God, I'm not even joking with you, bro. Oh, wow. That yeah. I didn't expect. Wow. I, I mean, I'm not even kidding you, bro. I felt, it felt, I felt the heat. Like pedophiles are just like so yeah no I'm not even kidding you wow I mean I know they weren't looking at me fuck you know <laughs> oh man I, I'm not even joking I just had a bad vibe for them because people would defend their children and knock them out 
I just okay. well, you know, Venice Beach is pretty crazy now. They're just you're you know you're smoking a uh, you're smoke people are smoking joints left and right. There's cops walking there because it's legal. That's right. It's, yeah, and it's really uh, it's so dirty on the street there. I mean, yeah, and but you're in Colorado. It's legal there too. I'm in Colorado. I think, yeah, I think we was the, I don't know if we was the first to have, we actually have recreational down the street. So you don't actually have to have the medicine card. You can just go down and buy it here. So you just got to be 18 years old here. If you have, if you have marijuana, you are going to jail for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm actually originally from Florida and it's just, you, know. you, can, you can get the cards down there, but I mean, here, I've been here 20 years, and if if you're walking around smoking it in a public place, it's not a big deal. That they'll just, you know, at at concerts. At I went to a Pink concert with my family, and we had to walk out into the hallway because it was so heavy. The kids was getting. I was afraid of the kids getting, you know, get, getting high. <laughs> so and they was they, they was small at the time. So. When's the Olympics? Uh, that's going to be coming in LA next. Is yeah. that right, Jay? Yes. Yeah, uh, summer 2024. Vic, yeah. it is coming to LA next. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, I'd I'd want to get some tickets, but holy smokes, tickets probably cost as much as a watch nowadays, right? No, I, I'm a. Uh... You can, yeah, no, you can get tickets. They're not so There's bad. So many right. different sports. I'm sure yeah. you can get tickets. Yeah. I think the popular ones are what gymnastics and um, I'd like to see the men's diving. Oh yeah. You can get tickets. They're not so bad. You'll, you'll and, uh, and the, the, kid, the track and field would be great to see, you know? Yeah. The track relays, field, relays. The, uh, there are people, LA is fighting like crazy to not have it. I mean, they are, I've never seen anything happen because it's ruined cities. Atlanta had the Olympics that's why we moved down here because my parents did business. 96. I lived in Florida then. Yeah. And, and yeah. In Atlanta, I had the Olympics. I remember that. There's no way they're going to get that bid for that if they, uh, unless they did already because LA is so dirty. And there's oh, no it. problem. I got it. It's already, they have it. So maybe this is going to be have it for 2000, 2028, Robert Padilla is saying. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe this is, uh, maybe this is the chance they're going to get an influx of money for the Olympics to clean the, all the mess up. And that's when it's going to get cleaned up maybe. Yeah. But here's the thing. They don't get money. They fund it themselves. That's the problem with uh, the Olympics. It screws over the host cities. It's, it's, it's a, I mean, my parents did a lot of business. That's why like, I'm really familiar with like the business of the Olympics. Cause that's why we moved to Atlanta. They started a business with the Olympics. We moved here in 96. So I'm originally from the North. LA has to pay for that. It's not like nobody's going to, there's no international organization that has all this money. That's going to say LA, here's money to, um, I gotcha. And, and the amount of money that they get from the, the tourism does not offset the amount of inf cost of the infrastructure, the cost of, um, housing and, and, and hosting. It's, uh, it's bad for the city. It's good exposure, but that's about it. Uh, it, I, makes, it, it makes history for the city, but other than that, it's a big expense. Yeah, a mess. Huge, huge. I gotcha. Yeah, billions and billions. And and the police uh, force, the police forcing has got to be incredible to do. Yep. Yeah, because there was a terrorist attack when, when I was in Atlanta. I was close to it too because I went to all the events when I was I was thirteen when it when it uh, took place. But I, I got to go to all, the what nine eleven nine eleven. It was a bomb. No, it was like a um, it was a small bomb. We were like maybe like half a mile away, but like I saw the chaos from it. Um, it wasn't, it was, I think it was pretty televised. I don't know if anyone watched the 96 Olympics. Do you guys remember? There was some sort of like a shoot of some kind of bomb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I no, I remember it, at a tower. There was a tower, right? Um, an explosion yeah. at a tower. I don't like know. A, a, like an audio tower, I think. Where there were speakers and one of the towers yeah, there got was blown speakers. up by bombs. There were I speakers. thought it was the base of the building, but I think they had the speakers and stuff in there. It was like an outdoor area. Oh, it was, and it was in Georgia, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I remember it was. Yeah, I remember the towers during the Olympics. And the towers fell on people. Those giant speaker towers fell on. Oh, maybe. I yeah. I think so. I was long ago, I was. It was like what ninety six is. God, it feels like. 
not that long ago. It's already yeah, it's been a long time. Ago. Yeah. Time flies. All right, all right. All right, guys, what do you think? Uh, kind of wrap it up. Let's let's talk for a little bit longer and, and then wrap it up soon. Yeah, sure. I love yeah. these live streams. Try and get the guys is uh, a live stream here. Um, of course, I guess they're all talking about California now. Yeah, I think we're caught. I think I'm caught up a little bit with the comments. Yeah. There was a pretty good comment that uh, Robert made here earlier about the – I can find it here. He said the Tudor Pepsi, the G, the Tudor GMT is like a mix of the Pepsi pre ceramic and the Sea Dweller, which is actually that's how thick I was telling you it was, Vic. It's, it's oh yeah, kinda, it's Very, pretty good. Yeah. How thick is it? About fourteen millimeters. Yeah, it's it's right around fourteen. Okay, yeah, that's pretty thick. So, but it's just and it's on a steel bracelet. You know what I mean? So you just don't realize how heavy. Yeah. It is when it's on a, on a thinner bracelet, but uh, does the bracelet does it have hollow center links or it's solid? It's solid, but it's not like a it's not like a, a know, like a Rolex. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's you can feel the quality. It's definitely it's definitely there. But uh, it's like they made they got leftover Rolex parts and they made the Tudors is what it feels like. So, but uh, which is a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. They they know how to make use of their extra parts. Just make another name and sell the same thing. Yeah. But so uh so you got the black you got the black um black dial fifty one ninety six coming in, is that what it was? Uh fifty six fifty oh, I, I'm just I just went blank. No. Sixty. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's why you're selling the white one? Yeah. When's the black one coming in? Well, I want the I, I want to get the money for the white one first. So, well, okay. So two things. I want to get the I, I need to find the right example because I had the right example. I found it and it sold. So once I get the money and I find it again, they're not impossible to find, but they're not like you know, there aren't like I'll have to hunt a little bit and make calls and and it could take a a little while. Right. So once I get the money in, um, then I'll start actively seeking. Um, cause I want a new unworn one. I want a mid condition one. Right. Right. I think it'll be a great investment piece long-term. Well, and that's what I was, that's what I was looking for with the Aquanaut is I wanted, you know, the new with the bracelet being new and everything. And, and, uh, like you said, it takes a little bit of hunting, but you talk to a few people and stuff and yeah, they're out there. They're that's, out there that's, so. I think that one's going to be also collectible because i mean it's rare like you know you pay a few thousand dollars extra for that bracelet now fine but someday right. when when people want things that because they're unique and rare when they're much right. harder to get when it's discontinued and so on that's going to become hard the cool yeah all the ones that you see uh, don't have the uh bracelets they're all just rubber straps yep and the awesome thing is you get the one on the bracelet you pay an extra thousand bucks and get the rubber strap in the clasp. Well, the clasp is a thousand itself. Pay twelve hundred and get a. That's what I did. I paid uh, extra like twelve hundred bucks and got the. Uh, oh, I got. I've got all of it. I've got the strap and the clasp and everything. So oh, for that, yeah, I got the one that I got came with everything. So, okay. Yeah. See, I wear it on the rubber most of the time because I'm like, I'm just scared to scratch the bracelet. Like, I don't know. Well, here, here's what I found. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Here's what I found. It's kind of cheesy. I found these Aquanaut bracelets on Etsy. And so basically my my strap is going to be uncut. My bracelet's going to be unused. And I'm putting these these straps on. Because I've already on my other one, I had them too. You can get them in green. You well, you know what I would black. I hear what you're saying. But you know what I would do? The, the strap is only 200 So I also have an uncut strap. So when I actually ordered, I ordered two straps. One, so I can cut. And one to leave it uncut, you know, for collectability purposes. Right. Uh, there is something. You, it's worth paying that 200 bucks for that paddock quality strap, I think. But do you think that they'll sell it to maybe in a yeah, store owner? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. If you need one, I'll just ask me. I'll get it for my AD. Okay. Yeah. Because that's I've got the one that's uncut and I want to keep it uncut. Yeah, keep it uncut. I agree with you. But instead of the Etsy one, because the Etsy one's going to be, you know, like a – polymer whatever the you know the cheap right. material right. 
pay for this. You're wearing a, you know, you're wearing a very expensive paddock, Philippe. Pay the 200 bucks and get the paddock quality rubber. Yeah. It's only well, 200 that's what I wasn't sure of. So yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, and if you have any trouble, just ask me. I get it. They 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 told me that my 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 straps are going to come before the watch. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, buddy, you Rich, you gotta you gotta you gotta push them. I mean, they have it. You, know, I think we have to be a little bit more proactive and just keep asking them. Yeah, I I know you don't want to be annoying, and I get it because sometimes I also feel that way, but. If you've been no, it, it, it's okay. It's okay because you know, like I, like I said, I, I mean, I, 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 I really bought overbought. I, I overstepped my my bounds on buying watches this year. So the longer mm -hmm. it sort of takes, I'm kind of okay with it right now. But that, mean, that that that's a two way street. That turns that, that that turns both ways. The fact that you bought so many watches, you're saying, oh, I bought so many, so they don't need to give me more. That just means you're a great customer and you've given them a lot of money. It also bodes well in favoring you to get the watch oh well i didn't buy from them though because you know um it, it, it's that it's that patek boutique that's attached to the turno so it's a turno patek yeah and i never bought any watches from them that's the only watch i bought from that place okay but you have bought from the turno right no 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 not at all ah uh, okay so then you're yeah then you gotta right. buy. i've only bought from my rolex ad that's it okay yeah yeah then then yeah. Yeah. See, that's why I am, I am lucky because the Rolex and the Paddock are connected. They're at the same place with me. I'm pretty fortunate there. So all my Rolex purchases make oh, that's me huge. Customer for the Paddock. Yeah. That's huge. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's cool. But it's okay. It's okay because you know it's not like I'm going to be buying a whole bunch of Pateks coming anyway. This is like really. I think this is probably the only one I would get at MSRP here. You never you know? know. You're going to get a gift. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well you might as well like, you might as well get on the list for a lot of them because the the hard ones you'll be waiting a while so you might as well let them might be a year or two down the road get on get on the list for the nautilus it's not oh. gonna happen overnight if they call you and you say you don't want it there's a million people like me who will say here's a nice finder's fee and go buy it yeah, no, I hear you. I, I already did try to um, sway, persuade them into getting me the Nautilus. I already went in there and I said, hey, you know, I want that watch too. Can I pay for it up front? Can I? I'll pay for the whole thing up front, cash. They said uh, they won't let me do that. They and said, I heard you say that, Vic, on the one stream that, uh, you know, finders fees and gifts and stuff like that. Yeah, and my my ID has a strict no gift policy. But like you said, I guess if you're not with them during the business hours, and if you're you know at their events, then it's a different situation. Yeah, see, I don't I don't make it like a bribe. It's a, I mean, it's not like it's not like a bribe or like one of those gifts things. It's like you know I I kind of I kind of do it in a way that's tasteful. Like I it's not like um uh, like you know like I donate to the person charity so there's no way anybody can accuse me of, of giving a bribe no way they can accuse them of accepting a bribe i can't get in trouble for giving a gift but i don't want to put them in a position to get right. in trouble for accepting something so you give it to their charity that's perfectly fine nobody's going to say anything about it because they're not benefiting directly from it but when, they are when i um when, when i bought my daytona um the sales lady i um she told me what the total was and um, I, I gave her an extra $100 bill with that amount that I was giving her. That's good. I, I, I told her to, I didn't pay for the whole thing up front. I told her to put this much to the watch. And I said, and keep the change. And the change was $100. Yeah. And so, so, so that, that anyway, happened yeah. nonchalantly, you know? Yeah. And, and, if, and if I think it's fine to give, because that's actually a good conversation that we should all start having and finding out what people are doing because I think people do accept gifts because I know that my friend asked me, she has a, she buys from an AD and she was asking me what she, she get him. She doesn't want to give him cash. So I was saying like, give him an iPad or something or, or, or whatever. So I know that it does happen. Um, and I wonder if like, you know, that plays into it. I know well, at my AD, you buy gold and that gives you this, that gives you the steel. It, it hasn't played into uh, my situation 
not even at all, not even once. I mean, this was the first time I, I'll be honest, it's the first time I ever got a salesperson anything at the watch store. And that was after I got my Daytona just a few months ago. Yeah, I would so think anything cool. prior. I, I didn't grease anybody in the prior eight years yeah. at all because yeah. the people change so often. Like the girl that I just got the Daytona from, I've been keeping in contact with her because she's supposed to get me a Pepsi next year. Guess what? A, a week ago, I emailed her and the email got bounced back. Oh. You so, need to go in there and talk to the manager and say, this is what we spoke about. Right, right. I, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing that. I'll be doing that. Yeah. You're right about that one. Gilbert Rios is asking a question. Hey, Rich and Vic, I just joined the live stream from Riverside, California. Your thoughts on what Tim Masso mentioned about the rise on theft from muggings from watch thieves around the world. I did think, you watch that part? Yeah, I did see that part. I think in America, it's not an issue because we're always in our cars, except in New York City. We're always, we're not walking, you know, like New York aside. Um even though he did mention in Los Angeles and downtown Beverly Hills, it happened to a Okay, yeah. Beverly Hills, like Rodeo Drive, yeah, I can see that happening too. But there's probably pretty heavy security on Rodeo Drive because it's small. I was in New York this year, and I was walking around at 12 o'clock at night. We were doing a little bit of bar hopping. Never had a problem. Yeah, um, I always feel safe in New York. Yeah, New York almost feels safer than most places. And, uh, you know, Colorado is just not a place that you need to – I don't think you need to worry about it. But Colorado, you can carry a gun on your person while you're walking around. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so we've, I had think, a lot of stuff, we've had a lot of stuff happen, so most people do. Oh, wow. I think it's a European issue for the most part because I've always, as a tourist in Europe, people always warn me. I've had experiences where people robbed me. I've, you know – I think it's a European thing where, where they target and rob tourists. I don't think it's an American thing. Last year, I brought three different Rolexes to Mexico, not really thinking about it. And then this year, I didn't bring any because people talked about it so much. It scared me from doing it. But um, the resort we stayed at, I still didn't. It was the same one. And I don't think it would have been a problem. Yeah, if you're in a resort, if you're in Mexico City, it's one thing. But if you're in like the... Cancun, yeah. near the resort towns, or Playa, yeah. Yeah, Playa, that's where it was at. And, you know, you're in that same resort all day and night. So, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, and most people in, in Europe, they know these watches. in America. I mean, in Atlanta, I swear to God, I have the most beautiful watches, and I'm always surprised, and I'm almost, like, begging for somebody to say, nice watch, and nobody will ever notice a watch. Like, you know, I'm like, I have this beautiful watch, and nobody notices. How sad is this? Especially with the, <laughs> the Patek. It's just so low-key. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. But I wear a gold Rolex sometimes. I mean, it's uh, and not like a solid. Uh, I'm talking about like an, my Daytona Rose Gold and Oyster Flex. Right. That, that's a little bit more subtle. But still, nobody nobody notices it. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't ever get um, watch appreciation comments. I really don't. What do you so, mean? You I mean, yeah, I, I don't get compliments. Uh, yeah, me too. I, I don't really. Oh, oh, uh, Bud, I told you a few days ago, I was wearing my ceramic Daytona and someone said, uh, hey, really nice watch. Is that a Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I appreciated the compliment. At least I got a watch compliment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's. I think that's why our community online here is so big because, you know, most of us don't get it from our daily life. Yeah. And it's so. hard to find each other. You know, that's why we have to do this. Like, you know, right. person's in Los Angeles, I'm in Atlanta, you're in Colorado, like, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's, you know, we want, we love this stuff so much and we want to talk about it all the time, but um, it's There's hard. Not a lot of people. Yeah. Not a lot of people, but probably what 80% of people can't afford it. And the other, the other people just ain't interested. So yesterday I was in the grocery store and the guy in front of me, he had a, he had an, um, an older air King. Um, yeah. and so he was standing, you know, we were just talking like about the weather cause it just started getting cold and I noticed his watch, right? I didn't say anything. Then I said, Hey, nice watch and real friendly guy. And then he's telling me, Oh yeah, I love this thing. I've had it for 25 years. It's been with me, you know, through night and shine, blah, blah, blah. And then I was saying, yeah, I collect watches. And then he's like, and he looks at my watch and he goes, is that, and then he looks, uh, 
uh, yeah, what did he say? He looked at my wall. I was wearing the the Daytona, and he um he goes, "Is that a Rolex?" Like he had no idea what it was. Like he knew that he wore a Rolex. Like, I think that there's a big contingency of people who get that Rolex because you know they wanted to feel like they made it, but they don't know anything else about the brand. Like just because well, it doesn't even mean well, they well. There's a lot of they they make a lot of models too, and not everybody follows them all like we do. Yeah, I think exactly. the straps throw people too. I think the the leather straps, the oyster flex, people's not used to that newer look. They're that's true. And and and, and, and and how and how often are you unsure if you're looking at a Submariner or an Invicta from a distance? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it only yeah, takes you... me a second though. If I glance at it, I get, if I get two looks at it, I know what it is. If it's but if it's I'll, far enough away, yeah. I'll tell you where you can always find people wearing nice watches. I, it's like a fail. It's never failed. I don't fly first class unless I'm, unless my company's paying for it. I always fly coach. So um, uh, you go through, you walk through, like, and all the people in first class always have a nice watch. They're always dressed like crap, look like crap, typical Americans, but they always have a Rolex or something. Yeah. You know, I agree. Yeah. I hardly fly. I hardly fly. But the few times I've flown, I, I've paid attention to watches and I tend to see um, uh, low, 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 uh, low key Rolexes all the time, you know, like explorers. Yeah. Because even the rich people who are like CEOs, I mean, we're collectors. We're like sick people. Most people who are like successful CEOs, they're going to have one nice watch. Right. And they may not know anything about any other watch. They may know something about their watch. They might inquire into their watch. But it's like some people who have a nice car just because they have a Mercedes. They don't. They wouldn't know a you know, a McC whatever. Like you know, if it's a diesel or if it's not. Yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, we live in our small small bubbles, for sure. And it's like you know, but it's all right. I mean, it's it's a crazy collection community because we're we're all pretty intense. I think. Everybody definitely got their own opinions and their own variations of what they what they think is the right watch to have, and so. But a lot of us like the same watches. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it is interesting. I always, you know, there's always that question, which I don't think I'll ever get an honest answer, which is, how much does hype affect our opinions on watches? Like, I don't think anybody can even. I don't even. I think everybody's half fooling themselves because I, I I did I did a post on the forum like. You know how much does hype affect your desire for a watch? Like, if everybody could get a Hulk, would you want one? Or uh, yeah, my 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 theory was the Batman versus the regular GMT. You know, like before it was discontinued, the Batman and the difference between the Batman and the regular GMT is half of a blue bezel. You know, half the bezel right. is blue. That's it. So when I say something, when I say it to like my friends or if I tell my parents or a family member and say, "Look, this watch." is being sold for double and this one <laughs> this one because half of the bezel is blue but then i wrote it on a forum once and everybody responded nope nope i'm not i'm not i'm not you know the hype doesn't affect me i actually really love the look of it and i'm like well it's half a blue bezel like if you're talking about collectability that's a different thing but these people are you know adamant that it's it's night and day difference no, the only time it was the big difference was when uh, I think the Jubilee. I love yeah, the, the Jubilee yeah. and the Batman. Yep, and that's the one I got. I didn't get the regular Batman because I just didn't, you know, I I, I just didn't think it was worth the premium, and that's, I didn't get it in time. Or is this continued? That's what I'm wearing right now, my Batman. Oh, awesome! I I do love it. I mean, I, I do love it, and I would buy it, but not at the premium. I wouldn't pay the premium. Just the Hulk I love because it doesn't have the polished center links, so you can wear it without it without having the scratches show every time you wear it. Oh, so yeah. they all they all have their differences. That, can always get the rubber bee on it. There you go. Yeah. Well, see, I have the Nautilus. I'm refusing to wear it because it's I'm afraid to scratch the bracelet. Like scary, I'm huh? That drives me crazy. Like the, I don't know. I have to figure something you out. Know, you know what, Vic, as far as that goes? Yeah. I'll give you some consolation on that. I've seen scratched 
Nautilus is, and it didn't doesn't affect the value by even five hundred bucks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't you think, Bud? I mean, it, as long as it's not, as long as it's not like. Remember uh, when we damaged. were surfing, Bud? We were surfing Nautiluses months ago, and we were talking about that specifically. Look at that one. Look how scratched up it is, and they still want seventy thousand dollars for it. Remember? <laughs> yeah, but I, I remember also saying if it's if it's like if it looks like it wasn't taken care of, I wouldn't buy it. But if it's just some desk diving scratches, that's not going to stop me from buying it. That, that's that's you and that's you and I. But yeah. those watches yeah. still were selling. They were still selling. Yeah, other yeah. people were still buying them. So. so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And you're probably not going to beat the heck out of it anyway, since you're so scared to scratch it. You're going to be very yeah. careful. But that's why you know this is this is I'm the kind of person like. That's why I need two. So when I get my next Nautilus, the one of them I'm gonna have like as like my baby, and then I'll be I'll the other one I'll kind of break in. Did you see Michael producer? Michael the producer just got his Nautilus. No, it took him, yeah. it took him two years. To wow! Get it, so really, yeah. Yeah. did he get the fifty nine eighty? I believe so. The rose gold. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah he got yeah. the fifty nine. Yeah, I remember that. Is that the perpetual yeah. calendar? It's the chronograph. Yeah, it's oh, the okay. chronograph, and, and he really, he loves it. It's the first watch I've seen him have without diamonds and, you know, ridiculous stuff on it. And um, He really yeah. loves it because it's so hard to get, and it's all status. You know, it's all status. Yeah, that guy has every watch in the world, and here he is wearing that Nautilus, and he's waited two years to get it. Yeah, that's that's why he loves it. If, if it was available, he wouldn't get it, I don't think. Gilbert yeah. says, uh, hey, I bet traveling with Parnese watches will piss off the watch thieves. <laughs> that would be funny if someone stole, like, a, a homage. Yeah, or, well, I mean, I'm always out in my docks or my ball watch, to be honest, a lot of the time. So I've never had anybody. I can't imagine somebody. Yeah, but in Europe, it's a different story. I, yeah, I there's pickpockets there that are professional, and they specialize in that, and they're looking for tourists. and. It's a big game there, right? Yeah. Plus that guy got the $1.3 million watch and the $800,000 watch that was stolen from the Japanese guy in Paris. I can't believe there's a sign that says, don't oh, yeah. wear your watch. Yeah. Where was that? In the UK? In London, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But I mean, I guess it makes sense, though, because, I mean, it's, it's half a million dollars on your wrist or even $50,000. Think about, like... How much that is for like this homeless person or this thief, you know, that's a lot of money right? for them. They could be, why steal someone's purse? You're going to get the same, uh, I guess it's like stealing a Chevy or a Mercedes, like still grant that offer. You might as well take the Mercedes. Yeah. yeah. Rooted Rotor. We've been going along. Rooted Rotor said he went out to dinner and we're still going out. Yeah. I think we better, we better end it up here. Okay. Rooter asked Vic, you like the bluesy? I love the bluesy. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Hey, it was right. cool, man. Um, okay, we'll do hey, it another nice time. To you, man. Yeah. Awesome. You too, bud. See you, Rich. All right. Later, guys. See you, Rich. Bye. Thanks. Have a good Thank night. Thank you, everybody in the chat for joining us. Thanks, guys. Fun. Good night. Participating. Thank you.